people want to talk about that. We're also talking about your New Year's resolutions as well. Yob's getting away with vandalism. And, of course, the weather just in general. And the darts. Oh, I love a bit of darts. I would love... I'm sad that I've got a partner because I was born to be... <laughs> a, a lovely friend. A darts player's wife. Right. I okay. was. Okay. You know, cigarette you and too much to makeup. Up I should do because I would have been brilliant. At Let's that. have a look at what you could have won. Uh, listen, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. You're back in your place with David next week. I'm back tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. This is Talk TV. This is Talk TV. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Cross Talk. One o'clock every weekday. We're here! Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The COVID inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideologies? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing interviews. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Just when I was getting used to my show, What Just Happened, being on Talk TV every Friday night at 10.30, they go and change it. I'm furious. They've moved it to 8.30 every Friday. Talk TV. What just happened? I am furious. Well, a very good morning to you. It is the last day of the year. It's my last show of the year, but I'll be back tomorrow morning as well at 7 a.m. for breakfast between 7 and 10 and indeed on Tuesday between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you now for the next three hours. There's loads to discuss and the thing that I sense that people want to talk about the most is XL bullies because those XL bully dogs, the American bully XL dogs, must be kept on the lead from today in England and Wales and it is also now illegal to breed, sell or abandon them 
following a series of fatal attacks in recent months. The dogs must also be muzzled in public. The owners who want to keep their dog after the outright ban comes in on the 1st of February have until midnight tonight to register. It's £92 to register their dog. Is there something you do differently? Uh, would it be good to have a ban or is this actually targeting responsible dog owners when there are irresponsible dog owners? Maybe you own an XL Billy or maybe you're afraid of them. Maybe you've seen them on the streets. Maybe it's something you want to avoid. Maybe it's an animal and an owner, perhaps, that you want to avoid. Let me know your thoughts on this. I want to get all angles, all sides of this. We'll be talking to Dominic Dyer, the animal rights campaigner, a little bit later on. But let me know what you think as well. 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. We will take as many calls, texts and tweets as we can. And Tommy is waiting to take your calls today. If you've never done it before, it's dead easy. You ring the number 0344 499 1000. You have a quick chat with Tommy. You, he, t you tell him what your point is, what you want to say on air. And then we ring you back. We get as many people on the air between now and 1 o'clock as possible on all sorts of debates. Not just the XL Billy debate. We're talking about the travel chaos. But Eurostar cancelling all its trains after the tunnel flooding under the River Thames as well. That bleeds into the weather. We'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about uh, New Year's resolutions and, of course, the uh, political leaders and what they're saying as well. Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak have been giving their New Year's messages and Rishi Sunak's secret talk to bring back Dominic Cummings. Remember him, the Barnard Castle eye test during lockdown. A big controversy politically there. And also budget airlines, EasyJet, Ryanair, Wizz Air, bagging £8 billion, £8 billion from extra fees such as charge, charges for luggage and printing a boarding pass. How much does that cost? A couple of pennies to print a boarding pass. Lots more to talk about as well in terms of beer goggles and whether they are actually something that could enhance your love life. We're also doing a political roundup of the year and a look ahead to the next year. We'll have the King of Pools, Joe Twyman, in the studio a little bit later on because three quarters of the democratic world is going to the polls in 2024, including here in the UK. So let us know your thoughts on all of these matters and anything you think we should be talking about. We're going to be talking about the darts as well. Maybe you watched it last night. Absolutely extraordinary win for a 16-year-old darts player. Let us know your thoughts. 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. 87222 is for text. 87222 plus the word talk. Uh, it brings your text through to the screen in front of me. Plus you can... Uh, tweet me at Talk TV or follow me at Peter Carville. Let's spend the next three hours together here on Talk TV. Well, there's lots to discuss this morning and the XL Billy debate is the big one we're going to be having today. I can see the phones going already if you want to join them. 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. But first I want to talk about travel. I want to talk about the fact that so many people are coming back from either holidays abroad or they've been maybe staying with relatives in various parts of the country. Uh, there are is absolute chaos in our country because, and there's no better man to get the analysis of it than Simon Calder from The Independent, the travel guru. We've had thousands of passengers facing severe disruption to their New Year's Eve plans as well. Of course, today is a difficult day to travel for many people. Eurostar cancelled all of Saturday's trains because of unprecedented flooding in the Thames Tunnel. Now, Simon Calder is in St Pancras at the moment one of the biggest stations in the country and one of the busiest as well, especially today. Simon, what's the picture there? And uh, give us a sense of, of what has been going on. Very good to see you this morning. I think uh, great to see you. And uh, yeah, well, look, while well, you have been for the whole year covering political chaos, I'm afraid I've been covering an awful lot of travel chaos. And here on the very last day of 2023, it's looking pretty much as bleak as it has done. I can bring you some good news, Peter, and that is that the first train did set off from here at London St Pancras International to uh, Paris just 10 minutes late or so. And um, that's due to problems that we've got in the tunnel beneath the Thames. That is continuing to be a real problem for an awful lot of people. Um, unfortunately, um, there are many, many cancellations of ordinary southeastern trains, domestic trains, but the 30,000 or so people who are due to travel today are likely to be able to do so without a problem. Unfortunately, the big issue is the 30,000 plus who couldn't travel yesterday, who are now at the back of the queue. I've uh, been inside. There we are. No ticket availability today. We won't be able to get you on in 
the earlier train. In fact, I've seen quite a number of people who have been queuing up just desperate to get home, typically to France, to Belgium, to the Netherlands, um, after what has been a miserable 24 hours. And then uh, on the domestic trains as well, Thameslink, they are seeing massive uh, cancellations. Most of the trains going through London, St Pancras International, on the line from Bedford and Luton to Gatwick and Brighton through the centre of town. Well, those are cancelled due to staff shortage. Just across the road at King's Cross, yep, more than 20 LNER intercity trains delayed or cancelled, uh, sorry, delayed or cancelled or curtailed, i.e. they're not running their full route because, again, of staff shortage. And that's a picture really right across the UK. If you look at uh, what's happening in northern trains, that's perhaps the most extreme. They've already put out a do not travel notice for um, six of their routes, including uh, Manchester to Chester, saying we haven't got any staff. And that's not the staff's fault. Um, it, it's a Sunday, Peter, of course, New Year's Eve this year. And Sunday is an optional day, worked on overtime. But this surely, Simon, I mean, uh, staff shortages, it's not as if the fact that uh, New Year's Eve being on a Sunday is something that's been unpredictable. We've known it for a long time. Shouldn't the train companies and many other travel companies have better prepared for this or incentivize people to work today? Or maybe they have and it hasn't worked. Well, uh, maybe they have. Yeah, I mean, that, that's basically it. The entire Northern Trains operation west of the Pennines, so the Lancashire side, is run on Sundays entirely on overtime. Nobody is obliged to work. So therefore, the very good women and men who normally work on that are simply thinking, well, do I want to work New Year's Eve? I don't think I do, thanks. I'll stay, the, stay with the family. This, Peter, is a problem that is so deep-rooted. It's basically going back to almost Victorian terms and conditions, um, which were in force um, when, when Sunday was very much a day of rest. It certainly isn't these days, but unfortunately, successive governments have just let um, this state of affairs continue. And, of course, with toxic industrial relations, which we have at the moment, particularly between the train drivers' union, as they and the government, there is absolutely no sign of any goodwill, any compromise. Um, I've never seen the railway so bad as I have done this year, and it is extremely regrettable, um, at a time when everything should be done to get people back on board trains. Instead, um, people are just saying, can't rely on them anymore, I'm going to get a car. Uh, so as left those relations there, there, there will be trouble ahead, still further strikes, you think, as time goes on? Oh, well, yeah, the uh, ASLEF Executive Committee, who called these strikes, will be meeting in the second week of January, and I'm uh, fully expecting them to call strikes. I've got um, on my bingo card 25th and the 27th of uh, uh, January, that's a Thursday and a Saturday, but who knows what they will do. We are simply no nearer any kind of settlement between those two uh, uh, warring parties, and therefore, um, I'm afraid, that yet more misery. Passengers unable to plan more than two weeks ahead because that's the amount of notice that unions are legally required to give. So, yeah, this is um, a horrible problem for passengers, but at its root is a deeply political problem involving the government and the rail unions. I just want to ask you about another story today in the mail. Three of the biggest budget airlines have wrecked in almost £8 billion for add-on charges, including luggage, yeah. speedy boarding and printing boarding passes at airports during the past year. This is, I mean, printing a boarding pass at the airport shouldn't cost you money, many people would argue. No, and when I talk to uh, Ryanair, who charge um, over 50-something pounds for this, 55 pounds, um, you might remember there was the uh, very nice uh, elderly couple who mistakenly printed out their boarding passes for coming back rather than going out, and they were charged 110 pounds. They just say, we don't want your money, we just want to persuade you that you've got to do everything right, because we don't want to have to pay somebody to sit at a desk in Stanford yeah. Airport printing out these boarding passes. And look... The government says it wants to crack down on all these um, so-called stealth charges. Frankly, as a passenger, and I know you're way too young to remember this, but I can remember before EasyJet, before Ryanair, when it cost you an absolute fortune to fly anywhere. Yeah. 
Yeah, well. I travel all the time on these budget airlines. I never pay for anything extra. I get delivered very safely, usually on time. I have a fantastic uh, experience and I can explore the world. So if they want to charge seven, 20 pounds, whatever it is for a special seat, then oh, we just, we just, we just want to pay that, that's fine. Sure. Simon. <laughs> Simon, thank you. We're just losing you slightly. The line uh, just uh, not brilliant at the end there, but I know exactly what Simon is saying there. And uh, I must say, I must say, uh, if I'm on a long haul flight, I will sometimes pay for a a, a seat because I'm quite tall and uh, a bit of extra leg room. But often you don't have to pay for those charges. So yeah, have you have you been stung with these charges or maybe think they're perfectly reasonable? Let us know. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. Dean has been in touch. He says, "Hi Peter, enjoying the show. Can you wish a happy sixtieth birthday to my, my wife Mandy? She enjoys listening." to you. Mandy, a very happy 60th birthday. Thank you for listening and watching and uh, it's a real pleasure to have you as uh, someone who is uh, watching and listening to the programme. So, happy 60th birthday to you. I hope you have a lovely day and a great year. A great, what is it now, your 61st year, which will be 2024. So, I hope you have a wonderful time. Lots of people getting in touch on XL Bullies as well. Richard says, any dog in a public place should be on a lead. Mick says, yet again, Dominic Cummings proves he can't be trusted as nothing is confidential. He should be classed as an XL bully and treated accordingly, says Mick. Well, Imogen is in London. She's given me a call on 03444991000 about, I think, XL Bullies. Imogen, you're very welcome to the programme. What would you like to say? Oh, hello. Hello there. You're on air. What would you like to say, Imogen? Um, basically, um, the housing officer put somebody next door to me with 12 XL bullies. 12? And they've been attacking me. Yeah, 12. And the local council allowed it. And I've been trying to get a housing officer to sort it out. They've attacked other people's dogs. We've told the police there's a big fence outside and they don't care. It looks like a concentration camp. You, you have, hold on. You have, you, I, I probably wouldn't wouldn't say concentration camp, uh, uh, Imogen. It's up to oh, you. No. No, no, no concentration camp. They've got big wiring, industrial wiring outside. Okay, it looks a bit like a prison. So, um, what, what's... Oh, sorry, I mean, sorry, I, that's what I meant to say. No, to no I'm, sure, I'm sure you did, Imogen. Tw <laughs> 12 XL Billy dogs. 12 XL, that's, that's a heck of well, a lot. That can't be nice for you. Them, and the neighbours try to attack me and threaten me. Then they've, they've tried to sell them the greedy breeders. They didn't get the vaccination, so people have realised that, and nobody wanted to buy them. And when I, after I reported them, they'd be giving them away. They've still got four now. I can't leave my front door. Every time I try to go out to my bin, they say to me, I'm provoking the dogs. The house stinks of wee and urine. You can imagine 12 dogs. I never complained once, yet they're trying to threaten me. Nobody does anything about it. The neighbours, all this area knows that they had dogs that have been attacking everybody's dogs. So, I mean, they've and she... Yeah. Her dogs attack people's dogs and she attacks them and now she's trying to hide inside the house. Everybody knows, nobody helped me. It affected my mental health for one year. I've been it must be so everybody. miserable for you, Imogen. Sorry? It must be so miserable for you. It is, because I can't leave my front door to get because there used to be 12 dogs barking around the front or on the back. You can, you can imagine how feeding 12 children, how, if you haven't got money and you're in benefits, how are they going to feed? They're just greedy breeders. It's disgusting. And now we've got all these dogs dumped in um, and vets and stuff because nobody wants to know. Greedy breeders and people are not looking and or how these dogs have been brought up. If there was 12 dogs in a house, ex and dangerous bullies, how would you have time to give affection to each dog? You're meant to separate yeah. them and stuff. It's absolutely disgusting. I want someone to help me. I want you to help me. I want everybody to know what happened to me. It's affected my mental health. I can't go around the back, around the front, and it's threatened me on top of that. I'm so sorry to hear that it's happening to you. Have you uh, you've reported them to the authorities then? You've, you've talked to the council? everything to everybody. And the police is always busy and they don't think it's serious and they think it's a neighbourly dispute. This is not a neighbourly dispute. In Birmingham, I've seen the dog attack somebody's neck and the, nobody's there. When you're outside and you're getting, getting chewed up, I'm so happy that they changed the law. But how dare a housing officer rehouse somebody next door with 12 dogs? How was it allowed? Well, do you think your neighbour is going to obey the law? Um, obviously not, because they're not those sort of people that are getting these dogs. Not every single XL bully needs to be put down, because there are some people who've got money and they look after their dogs. These people are on benefit. They're trying to breed dogs, and they've not got the vaccinations and stuff. They don't have no care and attention. All they're interested in is money. So good they've bought in these laws and passports and stuff. And I want the police and the housing to go next door and see t tomorrow morning if they register their dogs. Mm. It's £99. Pounds. They probably haven't got the money to do it. 
Goodness me. Well, listen, that sounds pretty miserable for you. Thank you very, very much indeed for your call. Kerry is in Surrey, wants to talk about this as well. Kerry, what's your perspective on XL bullies? Thanks for the call, by the way. Thank you. I couldn't agree with Imogen more. I don't agree with what um, Rishi Sunak is calling for. My daughter has two American bully XLs, and they are the most sweet, beautiful natured dogs. They're gentle. Um, they have a 10-year-old boy in the house. He's with the dogs. They're very responsible. They never leave the dogs with him alone, not mm -hmm. because they excel bodies, but because they're animals. Well, any, any dog yeah. shouldn't be left with children. You're absolutely right. That, is, that sounds like a responsible owner, Kerry. Of course. And I'm, I, I mean, I've, I've been concerned about um, BSL for a long time because I've got a staffie and I've always been worried that someone's going to report it as being a, a pit bull. And this is the problem so many dog owners are going to have, even though they don't have an XL bully. Someone will say that they do, and then they're going to have the, the, the fight with, the, um, it, with enforcement about whether it is or isn't, or it, it, you know, it meets the criteria. And dogs that, that, don't, that aren't XL bullies are going to be killed for no reason. There's hundreds of dogs. I mean, I've applied for, for dogs that I've seen on Instagram and social media who have been abandoned by their owners because they are scared. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, because I, I've had the concern that if I get a dog and it doesn't work out because I have a dog and they don't get on, then I'm going to be forced with putting a dog down unnecessarily. Mm. Because there's no and, and there are a lot of people who, who have taken XL Billy dogs from rescue centres, for example, who have done that um, and are trying to help these dogs as well. I wonder, um, Carrie, why your um, family has chosen to, to get an XL Billy dog. What's the attraction of having it? I can see the attraction for people who perhaps, you know, I, I, your dogs, you're saying they're very, very friendly, or your family's dogs, you're saying they're very friendly, but there's some people who do want them to be aggressive. But what, what's the attraction? Why go for that rather than a Spaniel or a Labrador or, or any other animal? I can't really answer that other than I, I chose a Staffy because I grew up in South Africa and mm -hmm. Staffies are very common dogs there and they yep. are beautiful natured dogs if they are brought up correctly. Mm -hmm. And going back to Imogen's point earlier, it's the people that should be targeted, not the breed. Mm -hmm. It's people, it's, it's the breeders that should first of all be targeted. Are they are they breeding their dogs right? Are well, I wonder with this legislation, right? Carrie, I think that's a very good point, actually. I wonder with le this legislation whether actually responsible people like your family, who I'm sure have registered the dogs and paid the £92 and all the rest of it, they're the responsible ones doing the things within the law, but people such as Imogen's neighbours who have 12 dogs in what sounds like a relatively small garden, that's not responsible. That is not a good owner by the sound of what Imogen is saying there. And actually, it's the responsible owners who are obeying the law and doing the right thing who are being penalised for this. Exactly. And, and one thing that I've said all along is I think that what Rishi Sunak has done is wrong. However, I think he's already forced out a lot of the bad owners because they've abandoned their dogs. Mm. Yeah. And I think if they reviewed this now and made every single person who owns a dog have a licence and prove that they're able to care for their dog and that, that they're doing it the right way, then they would force out these people that are choosing dogs for that reason because yeah. they can make them aggressive. I think you make some really, really good points there. Where are you from in South Africa? Uh, I was brought up in Johannesburg and then moved to Cape Town. Whereabouts in Cape Town? Seapoint, uh, Greenpoint, Lovely. Um, and then Bloberg Strand. I lived in both Seapoint and Greenpoint. Uh, I was oh, on, wow. my, on my gap yard in uh, South Africa. I worked for the Cape Argus newspaper uh, for six months um, back in the Amazing. day. A long time ago. Kerry, thank you very much for your call. It's Kerry and Surrey there making some very, very good points on this. If you want to add to them, if you want to add to the debate, let us know your thoughts. What's on the tip of your tongue about this issue or any other issue you think we are either talking about today or think we should be talking about? 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. Thanks to Barry who says, give all XL bullies to the military. A sign saying XL bully on patrol is likely to get a potential intruder's attention. Uh, that is a radical idea. Lots more of those to come and uh, let us know your thoughts as well. As I say, the phone number 0344 499 1000. You can text me 87222 with the word talk in your text or tweet me at Talk TV or follow me at Peter Cardwell. We're going to see what our panel thinks of all this in just a few minutes here on Talk TV. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. 
criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your this ideologies? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing interviews. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. Thank you to Anna in Surrey who says, why would any normal person keep a dog in the home that they're scared to leave with their 10-year-old child? I love dogs, but these XLs are dangerous. Well, Anna, I wouldn't leave a dog with any child, any dog with any child. Um, I mean, you do not know, I mean, especially young children, you don't know how the dog is going to interact with them. Something could go wrong, there could be a loud noise, um, the, the child could inadvertently you know, pull the dog's tail or something like that, or mucking about or whatever, and the dog could act in a, in a different way. And it's not just XL bullies, it's all sorts of dogs. So I think it's, it's responsible for any dog owner not to leave a dog alone in a room with a child. Um, you know, a lot of people will agree with that. Uh, some won't, of course. Julian Chesterfield says all dogs should be in leads and owners have the responsibility of looking after them. There's too much cruelty in the UK. Absolutely agree with that. In the break, actually, I was talking to an XL bully owner who rescued that XL bully uh, who was abandoned in a, a, a truck, a, a lorry, seven of them abandoned in a truck and rescued that. So I was just chatting to someone in my sort of social circle who was who had, had mentioned that I knew she had dogs but I didn't know she had an XL bully. Uh, Julie continues, there's too much cruelty in the UK. Any dog can bite if provoked. Again, uh, that point I was making to Anna there. Bully dogs shouldn't be put to sleep just because of their breed. They should be trained properly, says Julie in Chesterfield. Well, we'll get the views on that and lots of other uh, political and other stories with our uh, with our panel. It's the most wonderful time of the year. So Andy Williams is with <laughs> us. Um, how are you doing, Andy? Lovely to see you. Good, political thank commentator. you. Finally, that'll be the last time I hear that for a while. For, until next year. Until 1st of December next year. 1st yeah. of December next year. He's got a whole 11 months. What do you make of the XL Billy uh, um, controversy, the new laws that are coming in? What do you make of the fact that uh, we have a lot of owners of these dogs as well who are saying, well, actually, I'm responsible. My dog is, is fine. So what's the issue? I, I'm really glad this law's been tightened. There have been way too many horrific incidents over the last 12 months or so. Um, 
Uh, I'm sure that Billy dogs are the breed. Well, I know it's not a breed; it's a type of dog. Mm. But the type of dog that have uh, uh, that have been responsible for the majority of deaths. I think it's six out of the eleven deaths, or six out of ten deaths in the last year, due to dogs have been this XL Billy uh, type of dog. Yeah, and that's not a coincidence. And I'm sure there are plenty of very responsible owners out there who own XL Bullies who wouldn't hurt fly. But there is something clearly in common with XL bullies that means we the, the law had to be changed so I'm massively in favour are you a dog owner or are you having no I must, I'm not a massive dog lover actually but I have right. to say I did once work on uh, a campaign around puppy farming ending right. puppy farming which really opened my eyes you talked about cruelty to some of the horrible practices around uh, the way dogs are socialised and looked after and sold as well um, and I think it's incumbent on all dog owners and I said obviously I'm not one of them but on all dog owners to be responsible in the way that they buy dogs and look after them don't as well. buy a dog in a car park don't buy a dog off the internet no. don't buy a dog from someone you don't know don't buy a dog uh, well don't buy a dog adopt a dog adopt a dog a dog don't, don't shop you know I'm pretty militant on this I have a very very strong view on it um, James Heal is with us as well he is the political correspondent of the spectator James we're talking about um, this XL Billy ban that comes into force from tonight owners have to well sorry the ban the outright ban comes into force from the 1st of February but there are many restrictions and new laws and, and ideas that have come forward that are from t the midnight tonight James what do you make of this as a political issue well, what's really intriguing, of course, is that this ban only applies to England and Wales. So I think that, you know, I'll be interested to see how it all shakes out north of the border. Well, there are a lot of... There, sorry to interrupt you, James, but there are a lot of... I know, I'm sort of quite connected with various rescue animal people in Northern Ireland, and there are a lot of XL Billy dogs that have been moved to Northern Ireland, and there are yeah. a lot of rescue centres there and vets and various other... Uh, owners and so on who are looking after them and trying to sort out this problem because it is a problem and it is uh, a big big issue sorry to interrupt you go ahead not not at all no 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 you're, you're completely right i mean i just think that there'll be more probably from from uh, england uh, obviously moving to scotland uh sort of uh you know sort of the canine equivalent of the gretna green marriages where people used to flee up to scotland to get married there um yeah we interested to see how that shakes out north of the border in terms of uh will there be more attacks as a consequence but as as your guest was just saying you know absolutely right i think that campaign groups have cited more than 300 attacks by these dogs over the past year or so so i think that it, it, it's right that they're taking action i'm obviously very sorry for any animals affected uh, but equally you know you can't allow uh, the kind of instance we've seen involving other dogs and children as well and and and, and humans uh, so it's probably right that the government act on it uh, even if it was a little bit too late we've got quite a lot of messages on this anna has been back in touch anna and sorry says peter i wouldn't leave my child with a dog but i could probably save my 10 year old child from a poodle in the home Definitely not from an XL bully, uh, says Anna. I think that's the same Anna who was in touch previously, so thank you for your second message there. Brian in Bristol says, No dog is safe. Two of my four young children were bitten in the face by other people's dogs. Each time the owner said, It's never bitten anyone before. Both dogs were consequently put down. I hate it when a dog approaches you and the owner says, Don't worry, it won't bite you. It just wants to say hello. All dogs in the public place should be in the lead and muzzled, says Brian as well. Plus, the owner should realise most people do not want to say hello to your dog. Alan has been in touch on text as well. He says, we did a questionnaire with Dogs Trust to find out what breeds suited your lifestyle. Due to us working full time, the result came back saying, don't get a dog. We didn't get one. I wonder how many people do that. Mm -hmm. And there is a big question about responsibility in all of this. James, do you think the changes in the law are actually going to change behaviour necessarily because I think we're getting the feedback I'm getting today and on Twitter over the last 24 hours since we talked about the fact we're going to talk to Dominic Dyer actually about this a little bit later on is that a lot of responsible people are going to do the right thing are going to register their XL bully and a lot of people who are not responsible dog owners are going to evade the law and we talked with one caller on a little bit earlier on as well James who had uh, what was it 10 dogs uh, 12 dogs 12 uh, XL bullies in their in the garden next door I mean they're clearly irresponsible dog owners and the law will it catch up with them will it not we'll see how that works out but there are always people who are going to evade this James aren't there well, yeah, but there's two issues I'd say to that. I mean, the first of all is that, you know, it, even if the owner's responsible, the dog has proven it, it isn't as a breed, uh, as a type of a dog, as the XL dog. So I think that, you know, even if you have a very responsible owner uh, who re rears the dog with love and care and teaches them boundaries, etc., as we've shown, this type of breed is just very, very dangerous. So even a responsible owner, an attack can happen to them. And the second point is, Peter, of course, is that it's about breeding, isn't it? And the point is that if you stop breeding an animal and you clamp down on it and discourage its sale, <laughs> that will obviously have some impact on 
uh, all the sales and uh, consequent uh, attacks by these dogs. So I think that it'll take time, certainly. I'm not expecting to see sort of overhaul overnight a complete drop off in uh, cases, but I think it's necessary. And I think as we saw with the Dangerous Dog Act, a very controversial piece of legislation, but over time I think there's been a lot of merits to that piece of legislation and the American XL bully dog is just simply part of that trend. Dan and Ken says, Morning, Peter. We've been here before with German Shepherds, Dobermans, Rottweilers, etc. XL bullies are the flavour of the year. Certain owners are the ones who need to be kept on a lead. Sean and Bradford, who owns a beagle, says all dogs have the ability to inflict harm. Would it not be better to introduce dog licences and owner vetting to make sure people are suitable to have a dog? Before someone has a dog, they would need a licence and proof of insurance. Uh, that's an interesting idea, isn't it, Andy? Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a great idea. I, I, as I say, the vast, vast majority of dog owners are responsible, they're animal lovers, they care about the animals um, in, in their homes, but some aren't. And we need legislation in place, I think, to make sure that we're filtering out the, the, the people who haven't given enough thought and time and attention to the huge undertaking. We saw, didn't we, um, early on in lockdown, lots of people buying dogs for the first time, yep. not really thinking about the fact that they'd be going back into the office if they have full-time jobs and then no longer able to properly... Well, look and that's irresponsible by itself. To, to any animal, when you say you, you've got to have the time, the money, let's face it, you know, there yeah. are people who, who, I mean, look, there are people who would say, look, my animal will eat before I eat, uh, <laughs> no matter what the, the financial circumstance they're in. in. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually one of those people. But anyway, um, we're in a situation where lots of people during lockdown, as you correctly say, irresponsibly, I think, said, this is my lifestyle now, without thinking, well, actually, in, in, in a while, it could have been a few months, turned out to be a couple of years, that, that things will change dramatically. I'm going to have the time for this animal, and dogs need attention. Cats, other animals, don't need as much attention. Dogs need a lot of attention as well, don't they? They do. And it's interesting, like, we're, we're, uh, we're changing our working from home, our hybrid working mm. policy in the new year to move to more days a week in the office. Yeah. And I've yeah, had yeah. a couple of people who work with me saying, oh, I'm not going to be able to do that, unfortunately, because I have a dog now, to which the response of my boss is, tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's not going to be the only business where that is happening. On tweets, Lizzie says, no, it won't increase the safety of people in their owners' households, make it less. So these dogs will become very frustrated when they can't have more free exercise, but it will diminish, it, it will, it will diminish the danger to the public. XL's hold on. It's innate in the type of dog. Jackie says, Peter, it's not easy anymore to adopt a dog. We had two from the Dogs Trust in 2010 that have unfortunately died now. Jackie, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, we tried four times to adopt another one, but we're told we're not suitable. Uh, it would only have been on its own for 30 minutes a week. That's crazy. Um, you should absolutely be um, dog owners. Jackie, you sound very responsible and very reasonable person. And uh, I want people to adopt animals. And sometimes I think there are uh, too restrictive in, in some of their uh, thoughts on that. Chris, uh, sorry, Marcus is in Derby and I uh, want to take his calls. Give me a call at 0344 499 1000 and put his thoughts to the panel. Uh, Marcus, you're very welcome to uh, the programme. What would you like to say about XL Bullies? Hi. Yeah, um, it's not just about XL Bullies, actually. I think it's the whole Dangerous Dog Act that he's looking at. Um, with a, a, an XL Bully, it isn't actually a breed. Um, and yeah, it's so a type, it's very isn't hard it? To yeah, it's, it, how can you distinguish um, one dog from another? What we should be doing is is um, punishing the deed, not the breed. And by uh, the way we, I would do this is to make people... Well, some, some of these dogs are bred as weapons, and therefore I think we should treat the dog as a weapon. If you use a gun to shoot somebody, you'd be done for murder. If, you use, if a dog attacks somebody and kills them, that person whose dog it is, should also be treated in a similar way to murder. Mm. And in doing that... It, 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 often, it often is, and often often those those dogs are treated very, very harshly. Yeah, I'm not on about the dogs, I'm treated, I'm talking about the owners. Oh, the owners, you think, you think, sorry, you, you think, the, you yeah, think the owners, they, because yeah, they're using the dog as a weapon, you think? Yes, exactly. And, and if somebody used a gun to kill somebody, it wouldn't say, oh, it wasn't me, it was me gun. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I, if, you, if you start making people more responsible right the way through the supply chain, from breeder right the way through, then it would clear up the, 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 the problem that we currently face uh, with the dangerous dog, dog act. Because this is just going to keep on going and going. If it's not an XL bully this year, it'll be another breed or 
made up breed. Why is uh, no one so, talking yeah, about muzzle, says Gary in Hamel Hempstead. Uh, that's a very interesting point as well, because if these dogs are muzzled in public, maybe people will feel safer, uh, Marcus. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah. Uh, well, we at uh, the kennels here, we have quite, we've had quite a few XL bullies, and they've been the nicest, softest um, animals, and that's because they've been responsibly brought up. Um, okay. The first twelve weeks of a puppy's life are the most important ones to do it in their development and how they they turn out. You're a dog owner yourself, Marcus, are you? Sorry. You're a dog owner yourself, are you? Yeah, yeah, we've got loads of dogs. <laughs> right. No, no XL bullies, but um, yeah, yeah we, 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 uh, and I say I run a kennels, a boarding kennels. Ah, so. okay, okay. So would yeah. you take in XL bullies to, to your kennels? Um, yes, we would, but we would we, we take in all do dogs based on their own merit. I mean, I have had to um, um, ban certain dogs, ba basic, not, not bullies or mm -hmm. not a banned breed, but just simply because they were... Um, we've had problems biting staff and yeah. they've been badly brought, brought up dogs. Which comes back um, to your point about deed not breed and responsibility of owners. So Marcus, thank you very much for that. Loads of messages about that. So I want to go back to my panel briefly to get their final thoughts on this. Um, Sue says, Peter, surely XL Billy owner and responsible dog owner are contradictions in terms, says Sue in Welling. Bro. Well, I'm not sure they are, Sue, to be honest. I personally wouldn't get an XL Billy dog. I'm not really a dog person anyway, but I do know uh, responsible XL Billy owners. I, was, uh, I actually know one of my social circle as well. Uh, actually, Peter, these XL Billy dogs are four-legged weapons, which certain types of people use to terrorise people. Well, that's also true. Uh, Penny in Essex makes that point. Maureen in London says, Peter, my small dog was mauled by an off-the-lead XL Billy in the summer. He couldn't survive his injuries and had to be put to sleep. It was the most traumatic experience for both him and myself. I think it will live with me forever, having to witness my beautiful dog being mauled to death. The owner received a caution. The dog was put to sleep. I fear this law will not really work. Breeders will find a way around it, and judging by what I see on a daily basis, owners will probably just ignore it. Good morning, Peter, says someone else. I don't know why uh, someone would want an XL bully. They look horrible, evil-looking, and solid muscle. Anyone who leaves a child with a dog shouldn't have a dog or a child. Any dog, can at any dog can attack. They can have an off day, but these dogs can take down the strongest man. Sorry, but they should be banned. Uh, final thought from my panel, James Heal. Final thought in terms of everything you've heard today on this. Yeah, I expect the law to be changed uh, in the coming years. Uh, as you sort of uh, alluded to there in some of the replies and comments, uh, the Dangerous Dog Act is obviously a very controversial piece of legislation, so I expect this to be tweaked <laughs> in line in accordance with how bullying pat breeding patterns work with XL bullies. Um, but I think the consensus from all of those is that, uh, you know, this really needs to be dealt with, and um, I'm glad the government are finally doing that. James, thank you. Final thought on XL bullies from Andy Williams, please. Yeah, I agree with James. Um, the government's priority has to be to keep people safe. There was a pattern this year of really awful attacks from this one type of dog, and I think it's the right thing to do, and they should keep this under review. OK, we're going to pause on XL bullies for the meantime. We've got lots more calls, texts and tweets that people want to get in on this. Dominic Dyer, the animal rights campaigner, is coming on in about 20 minutes' time. We're going to talk about other issues in the meantime with James and with Andy, but we are going to return to XL Billy. So get your calls in now. 0344 499 1000. Tommy's waiting for them. We'll take as many calls as we can. We'll put calls to Dominic as well. So let us know what you think on this. 0344 499 1000. As I say, we'll return to this in about 15, 20 minutes' time. We're going to talk about other major issues in the news with Andy and with James after the break here on Talk TV. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. 
for the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. Well, as I say, we're going to return to the XL Bullies uh, topic a little bit later on. Actually, in just a few minutes' time, Dominic Dyer, the animal rights campaigner, is going to be with us. Uh, we have had so many texts and tweets that I'm going to actually just read out a couple more. It's all very, very simple. The dogs must be muzzled in public. All dogs must be muzzled in public, says Tony in Norfolk. Cliff and Berkshire makes a point I haven't actually uh, considered. I knew this somewhere in the back of my mind. But he said, morning, Peter, am I correct in thinking that many of the type of dog in question have breathing issues? Surely it's cruel to put such a dog on a muzzle, which will stop it to a degree from being able to breathe uh, freely and pant. And final one on this for the moment, uh, Claire in Wolverhampton says, hi, Peter, loving the show. We are seasoned dog owners, and after our aged uh, border collie passed away, Claire, I'm really sorry to hear about that, uh, we wanted a rescue. We were turned down by all dogs homes we approach for various reasons, so we ended up adopting from Serbia. My goodness, it does seem to be difficult. You, I, I, do, I do wonder what the sort of barriers that a lot of these uh, rescue centres put up. Um, I've never had a problem, but maybe, you know, maybe it's just circumstance or where my uh, house is and stuff like that in terms of animals, but a lot of dogs in particular does seem to be a problem. As I say, we're going to park this just now, but in about 15 minutes time or so at 11 o'clock, we're going to talk more about this. In the meantime, there are lots of other issues around today I want my panel to discuss. First of all, I want uh, top political correspondent James Heal's thoughts on Dominic Cummings, because the big story in the Sunday Times today is that Rishi Sunak has had secret talks to bring back uh, the former senior advisor to uh, to Boris Johnson, very controversial person. We remember the eye test when he drove to Barnard Castle, breaking lockdown and all of that controversy. He was he left government in November uh, 2020, I think, and uh, has, of course, been around in some form, certainly on Twitter, and we now know he's had a couple of meetings with Rishi Sunak. James, what is the view from you? Well, I think it really shows just how all over the place Rishi Sunak's been in terms of strategy, really, which is that he consulted Dominic Cummings, as we understand it, according to Dominic Cummings' account, in December 2022. He then went back to him in July 2023, uh, seven months later. I don't think Dominic Cummings was saying anything that he wasn't putting in his substacks, tweeting, etc. Um, and I think that it really does give an insight into, I think, perhaps how the Sunak's number 10 team has been trying to 
reboot the operation, try and have a reset, an overhaul, tried a lot of different things over the past six months at the end of 2023, and none of that has seemed to work. The other point I'd make is that obviously this, this news today coming out is going to annoy friends of Boris Johnson, supporters like Nadine Dorries. Uh, it's also going to annoy people in the mainstream of the Tory party, rather put out by Dominic Cummings' way of operating. Um, obviously, he isn't going to go and work for Rishi Sunak, so I think that you know, there's always that to kind of discount it against. Um, but I think that it does raise questions about the kind of advice which Sunak's team is seeking out. Um, although the conspiracy theorists, I think, will obviously see this as proof that the plot was working, etc., uh, and that it was all of the a movement. Exactly, yeah. But I think also the fact that this was three months after. Four months after, I think um, Dominic Cummings had tweeted that he wanted to like salt the earth, the Conservative Party, yeah. and sort of finish them off, and worst defeats since 1832, etc. Uh, does raise, I think, some questions among Tory MPs about perhaps who Rishi Sunak's been listening to. Uh, and they hate him. I mean, the Conservative MPs really hate him because there has been so so much uh, contempt for them, James, hasn't there? Yeah, completely. And it's always been a pretty toxic relationship. Uh, right from the time when he was uh, working, I think, as an education spad, then through the vote leave, and then 2019, he takes away the whip from 21 Tory MPs, some of them very popular in the party, uh, and thereafter they had lockdown and they had the next 18 months or so, where there was a lot of uh, negativity about Cummings. And then since then, he's obviously tried to take out Boris Johnson and has been a very divisive figure in Westminster and the Tory party. There's no suggestion, Andy Williams, that Dominic Cummings is coming back, but certainly those conversations have been had and there were denials from Downing Street that mm -hmm. Dominic Cummings was involved in talks. Maybe the people who were denying that didn't know what was going on. Maybe this was kept very, very tight in the way that the David Cameron uh, uh, thing was kept very tight. Someone very senior in Downing Street told me about the David Cameron uh, aspect and said, how do you keep a secret in Westminster? You don't tell people. So maybe right. this was just not known by various people. So, I mean, as someone who is perhaps not entirely sympathetic to the government, Andy. I think I think uh, you wouldn't mind me uh, describing I it in wouldn't. such a way. No. What What are your thoughts in regard to to Dominic Cummings and these secret talks that Rishi Sunak has been having with him? Well, I think to to James's point, what this demonstrates is a, a growing sense of panic in Number Ten because 2023, the strategy was project competence, right? Mm -hmm, so we've mm -hmm. got these five priorities and Rishi Sunak is saying we're going to deliver on the people's priorities and we're going to show that um, unlike Labour we make promises we keep them and we get things done and I, I mean firstly not all of those promises have been met by any means but secondly when you're 20 23 points behind in the polls competence alone is not enough mm -hmm. and what Tim Shipman's piece which I think is really I think it's a great story proper scoop isn't it it's a proper scoop um, what his piece really shows is that there is a debate going on between do we continue to pursue this strategy of competence and showing that Rishi Sunak is managerial and sensible and we can rely on him and trust him, or do they need to go for broke, which is a very Dominic Cummings type approach, be radical, be bold. There's a piece... But in, is Rishi in, Sunak too... Sorry to interrupt you. No. Is Rishi Sunak just too cautious to go for broke? Because, look... Dominic Cummings, love him or loathe him, mm. he was an absolutely crucial bit of the 2019 huge success for Boris Johnson. He is someone who, you know, many people think he's an evil genius. Um, I'm kind of one of them, to be honest. I think that he does, he, he is, is a political genius. He's a strategic genius. He has proven time and time again that he can win campaigns, not just the Leave campaign, but also 2019, which was... A, a massive victory. He's. I was a special advisor. He signed off me being sacked, and I'm praising him. So that shows the depth of feeling here. But actually, you know, we we've got to remember that he is he is someone who has something to say, and his radicalism and what he's putting forward is something that Richie Sunak just didn't feel he could do. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a proven winner kind of time and time again, electorally at least, and in, in campaign terms. I was talking to someone very close to him who worked with him in Number 10 um, uh, at, the, at the highest level in the summer, and he said, if you gave me and Dom and uh, someone else uh, 12 months to work with Rishi Sunak's team, we would win the election. They're not going to have and, it, though. Uh, they're, then, not they're, have not, it. they're not going to have it. But I sort of believe that because he is so ruthless and so... Uh, radical and bold and you know there's there's ideas that he proposed in here like um, changing the rate at which you pay 40% in the pound and income tax from yes. 50 to 100,000 pounds yes. that would be a truly a game radical, changer. game changing transformative measure would it be enough to win the election who knows but it would be more impactful than 
tinkering with national insurance here and there or, or you know other proposals that are being made so i think there is something about sunak potentially being a bit too cautious and caution is not going to turn the tide and as well in the sunday times today james Hill, we have the news that keir starmer is more popular personally than rishi sunak including in rishi sunak's own constituency of richmond in yorkshire wow. that's got a heart Yes, a little bit embarrassing, perhaps, to the Prime Minister. I mean, when Rishi Sunak was running for the leadership in last year, last summer, and then, of course, when he got it in October 2022, uh, the whole thing was he's going to be bringing up the Tory party ratings, he's the most popular Tory in the country, and actually what we've seen 14 months on is that Sunak's personal ratings have been brought down by the Conservative Party rather than hauling them up. <laughs> uh, and now Keir Starmer, uh, for whom there's no great sort of popular fanfare in the way that Tony Blair... Uh, had in 97 um, is now overtaken him. But it doesn't matter that Sunak, that uh, Starmer is relatively unpopular. The fact that Sunak's ratings are now comparable to Boris Johnson when he lost office uh, last year shows that actually um, it doesn't really matter what kind of campaign they try to run, if it's presidential versus party. Uh, number 10 have a really, really steep uphill battle. Uh, and that's why we're seeing a focus on tax cuts. We're seeing a bit about images. So you've got this plan this week for Sunak to try and go and meet voters from Thursday onwards and tour the constituency starting in real the Real people? Month. Real people? Is that a good idea? Real, pe Sunak? real people. Real people. Not some not people like us, Peter, sadly. <laughs> uh, uh, no more, I think, no, no more, more drinks parties with us, sadly. Um, but yeah, from the East Midlands and Thursday onwards. But look, I mean, the point is, is that Labour are 20 points ahead. And when that happens, yeah. the media frames you in a certain way. We talk about Starmer in a certain way. And everything he does looks strong compared to Sunak looks weak. And I don't know how you turn that around. Labour have focused a lot on crime as well. They clearly think law and order is a big issue on which they can win. Uh, we have some statistics. Uh, we talked about this yesterday on the programme as well, but a crackdown on Yobbish behaviour and vandalism has been demanded after claims fewer than 1 in 20 cases led to charges last year. The Liberal Democrats are now talking about this. They say only one in, about 4% of vandalism uh, cases resulted in a charge last year. This is something that uh, many people feel the police are just not on their side, the forces of law and order, and that the state perhaps isn't working for them with the highest uh, taxes uh, proportion of G as a proportion of GDP uh, what the country makes since the Second World War. I wonder, James, do you think Labour will perhaps frame this almost as a value for money election saying, yeah, OK, taxes are high, but your public services need to get a lot better. You need to get more bang for your buck. Well, they ought to. Uh, I'm just not sure if that appeals to kind of traditional Labour arguments and themes, but they, they should really do that. I mean, 2010-15, uh, the Cameron era offer was you'll get more for less, which is that you'll we'll, we'll spend less money on things like police, but we'll get better returns by laying off old incompetent officers, etc., shrinking numbers. Now we seem to have less for more. We're paying higher taxes and we're getting less and less of these crimes sorted. It's partly to do with COVID, it's partly to do with legacy issues, it's partly to the fact we laid off a load of police officers then trying to get new ones, uh, but also... Um, it's to do with the fact that we have not enough things like prison spaces in this yeah, country. And yeah. so we've got a big fight coming up later this year, Peter, when we see the sentencing bill come to Parliament. Um, the fact is we've only got a certain number of places. Now, I think the government's line is that we should have the most serious people like rapists, you know, murderers, etc. Those should be in there for life means life. But equally, that, of course, means that people for more minor sentences, um, like the ones identified by the Liberal Democrats today, uh, shouldn't go to prison. So Labour ought to be on the front foot on this. And Giovanna Mahmood, the Shadow Justice Secretary, ought to be out there really banging the drum, just like Tony Blair was in 94, making um, headlines for talking about um, Britain being a broken society following the tragedy of the James Bolger case. And even, even before then, uh, in 1992, who could forget uh, the, uh, Neil Kinnock saying, and now let's welcome the next Home Secretary, Tony yeah. Blair. Yeah, that didn't exactly. quite work. Uh, anyway, a quick word from <laughs> Ali Williams on this, and then I want to ask you about darts. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, I think Labour fra should frame this election and will frame this election as we're going to get things working better for you because taxes are up, living scans are down, you can't get a dental appointment, trains don't work, hospitals are full, crime is up, nothing's working. So the, the question to the electorate ne next year, i.e. tomorrow onwards, uh, is are things working better for you than they were 14 years ago? Yeah, and the answer yeah, yeah. for most people is no. OK, well, that's a, that, that is very clear. Uh, Luke Littler. Uh, the uh, sensation, 16-year-old darts sensation. We're going to talk about this in more detail a little bit later in the programme. But you were watching? I was last night. Unbelievable. So Luke Littler is a uh, 16-year-old. Uh, he's got to the, the quarterfinals of the World Darts Championship. He Last night he beat Raymond Van, Van Barneveld, Barney, who's a Dutch darts legend. And Raymond Van Barneveld won the World Darts Champ Championship 20 days 
before Luke Littler was born. Wow. I mean, it is absolutely incredible. And if he goes on to win this as a 16-year-old, it's going to be one of the great British sporting achievements that I can remember. It's amazing. Are you are you a big darts person? I or? do quite like the darts. You like yeah. the darts? Yeah, yeah I've been yeah. To, I've been to the darts, which is a great. For people who haven't been, is a great day out. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? To Ali Pali Ali, for the Ali, Ali darts. Yeah. And that's where this is happening, isn't it? Yeah. So where is he now? Where is he in the competition? He's in quarterfinals. So he got to the quarterfinals. He's playing a Northern Irishman, I think, in the last eight. Okay. Um, and the finals on the third of January. He might go all the way. I mean, he looked amazing. James he, Hill, are you a darts fan? Uh, not especially, but I'm a British Patriot and I'll always cheer on one of my countrymen. Uh, and he's made 50 grand so far. He was doing his six month, uh, GCSE six months ago. <laughs> uh, I want to see him run and run and get to the final and win, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that would be a wonderful thing for the country, I think, as well, to have uh, someone so young and uh, who has achieved a huge amount. This is this is really quite impressive. I mean, my knowledge of darts is mainly through Bullseye, which you won't remember, James, because you're too young. <laughs> Um, yes, but I, uh, Peter, I'm just going to say it's nice to see a sportsman who looks more like myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Truly representative. Anyone can make it in British sport, just saying. Are you saying you're not athletic? I mean, I think that's, <laughs> that's, that's outrageous. James Hale, thank you very, very much indeed. James Hale, political correspondent of The Spectator. Thank you also to Andy Williams in studio. Andy is a political commentator. Thank you to you. We're going to talk to Dominic Dyer in just a few minutes on this XL Billy issue. Big, big issue. Uh, Brian has been in touch to say all dogs should wear a muzzle in public. Simple and will work. A license or a registration document won't stop a dog attacking. Lots of debate on this. I want your thoughts as well. 0344 499 1000. This is Talk TV. This, my friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Sport Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this is important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, I'm just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. 
Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. When I was getting used to my show, What Just Happened, being on Talk TV every Friday night at 10.30, they go and change it. I'm furious. They've moved it to 8.30 every Friday. Talk TV, What Just Happened. I am furious. Well, a very good morning. This is Talk TV. I'm Peter Cardwell with you between now and one o'clock. If you're listening on Talk Radio, don't forget you can watch us on Talk TV as well. Sky 522, Virgin 606, Freeview 237, Freesat 217 or via YouTube or the Talk TV app. And you can toggle between the two. Maybe you're heading out a bit later on. Don't forget to put Talk Radio on in the car. And let us know what you think as well because there are lots of big debates, including the XL Bully debate. All, not every call, but almost every call we're getting into the building today is on XL Bullies. We're going to talk about that in a second and we're going to take as many of your calls as we can between now and one o'clock. 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. Tommy is there and he will take your call. We'll get back to as many people as possible and put them on the air. 87222 is the text number. 87222 with the word talk in your text. You can tweet me at Talk TV or you can follow me as well at Peter Cardwell. Lots of people getting in touch about uh, animals. Uh, Vincent says, should be deemed that any dog could even harm another dog should be muzzled. We'll talk about that properly in a second. Dominic Cummings as well. Terry in Birmingham says, I'd love Cumming Cummings to be brought back, but perhaps it's too late. Anyone who annoys civil servants, the BBC and Sky suits me, but why? Just listen to the electorate. That would work, says Terry. Uh, Brian says, Sunak couldn't deliver a pizza. Uh, Mike on XL Bullies says, XL Bullies are not banned in Scotland. The Control of Dogs Scotland Act 2010, extension to the Dangerous Dogs Act of 1991. It is a criminal offence to allow any dog to be dangerously out of control in any place. They don't state a breed and owners are responsible. Let's get into this big debate in just a minute here on Talk TV. But as I say, I want your thoughts on it. 0344 499 1000. We'll be talking this hour as well about the dark sensation Luke Littler as well. We'll be talking about the New Year's Eve weather, chaos and indeed about beer goggles. So stay with us here on Talk TV. Well, thank you to everybody who's been in touch about this. Lots and lots of thoughts are coming into this building, including uh, from uh, Dominic Dyer, who is an animal welfare campaigner. We're going to talk to him now about this. Dominic, you're welcome back to the programme. Thanks for taking the time this New Year's Eve. Uh, this is a significant day, of course, because the law is changing. The regulations are changing from midnight tonight. People have to register XL Billy Dogs, and then from February, there will be a ban in place. What do you make of what the government has done here? What do you think they've done correctly? What do you think they've not done correctly, Dominic? Well, you know, I was involved as a civil servant many, many years ago working in the legal department when the Dangerous Dogs Act was actually drafted up about 32 years ago now. And I thought at the time it was a knee-jerk reaction to a problem in terms of public safety and the danger of dogs. And, you know, I remember at the time the lawyers sort of sitting there and looking at what dogs do we put on the list, what do we don't put on the list, who do we decide, how do we define these breeds. It was a mess when it was drafted. And if we look at the law as it stands now all these years later, it doesn't work. Breed-specific legislation like this where you define and ban certain breeds, um, we've seen in the last 20 years, for example, a 159% increase in the number of attacks of dogs on people. So, you know, if you look at legislation and say, is this effective? Well, there's no sign that it is. Yeah. And all that Sunak has done really is muddied the waters further and caused huge public concern and an animal welfare crisis at a time when we've got a cost of living crisis. So basically, he said, well, you know, we've got to ban XL bullies, but it's not a breed. How do you define that breed? So there's lots of people out there at the moment that are giving up dogs that are a crossbreed staff bull terrier dogs, not certain as to whether they fall into lots, this category. Lots of abandoned dogs. I actually spoke earlier to someone in my social circle who is uh, the, who took a, an abandoned uh, XL Billy dog and actually, I'm sure, as I'm sure you know far better than I do, uh, there are lots of dogs being brought north of the border as well to exactly. Scotland where there's not a ban and also yep. to Northern Ireland as well where a lot of rescue centres are there taking is, them in. There is and, and the vets themselves, you've got to think about the veterinary industry here, you know the veterinary industry is on a massive pressure, we've talked about this in the past, the cost of living crisis, more and more people giving up their animals, well this is now added burden to them. So there's vets up and down the country at the moment, Peter, that are going to have to be putting down perfectly healthy, well-behaved dogs. 
okay. that has a huge mental health impact on the veterinary profession. There's a high rate of suicide and depression already. So that's a terrible thing to be doing. Also, there's a massive backlog in trying to neuter these animals. You know, that you've got to neuter thousands of animals. They just don't have the capacity to do that, to meet the government's rules. You've got to put in place third party liability insurance with this exemption certificate. That adds extra cost to people when they can't afford it. So the animals are being given up. I don't think people are going to be safer as a result of this. I do think there's going to be massive animal suffering and huge human suffering as a result of what's going on. And ultimately, we've got to deal with dog problems differently. We need a proper decent licensing system in this country for dog ownership, where you spend 150, 200 pounds a year, you have an equivalent of DVLA set up to oversee the licensing process so we can deal with dangerous dogs properly, help local authorities in terms of what they why, need why to would do. You put to it, sorry to interrupt you, Dominic. Why would you put it at 150, 200 pounds a year? Do you think it needs to hurt a little bit in terms of financially to say to people, look, you've got to have the financial outlay, you've got to have the means to have a dog? Yes, I think it's a bit like road tax, isn't it? You've got to be serious about wanting to pay for it and you understand what it's there for. And I think, you know, ultimately at the moment you can buy dogs on the internet, there's legal b puppy breeders, you can, you know, there's, there's, there's no legislation to control the import of dogs to a large degree. You know, the government have talked about doing this and they've done nothing about it. So dogs can be bought and sold all over the place, no control on their behaviour, no control on their breeding. That's what's causing the problem. Let's remember, responsible dog owners will always do the right thing. It's the ones that are not responsible yeah. that's the problem here. A lot of criminals, for example, will use dogs as weapons. They don't have XL bully dogs, they'll take another type of dog. So the idea that the streets are going to be safer as a result of this piece of legislation, I think is just, you know, not, not going to happen. Lots of people getting in touch. Um, one person in Lincolnshire, I think it's Tom, says, this is hypocrisy. What makes them safe in Scotland? Another person got in touch with me earlier today, actually, before the show, to say, uh, send me a message online saying that uh, about a pet-loving practice, um, a vet in, veterinary practice, I'm not entirely sure where they are, uh, dedicated to preserving the well-being of all animals in line with our commitment. We will not euthanize any healthy animals, including XL billy dogs. That is, uh, where, where was it, Chris? Sorry? The, the, the uh, veterinary practice, can you remember where they were? I'm just asking my producer. Lincoln, uh, yes. To, to further, this is a veterinary practice called Pegasus Vets. Uh, this is online, so it's a, public, it's a public thing. To further support responsible pet care, says Pegasus Vets, and assist with current legislation, we're offering exclusive discounts for spaying and neutering of XL bully breeds. They're discounting uh, by sort of £45, pounds, uh, female down from 300 to 200 they're, lot, they're saying, let's work together to ensure happiness and health of our beloved furry friends. And actually, um, you're right, Dominic, and that a lot of responsible people will be penalised by the this legislation will they not but there are real concerns are there not there's so many people who want to uh, w who you know when they see an XL billy dog or a dog like that they will recoil they will be scared they will be happy that those dogs will now be muzzled in public or should be muzzled in well, public and some people will welcome this legislation no I, I, you, listen I think ultimately responsible dog ownership is really important okay there are certain breeds of dogs not just XL bully dogs that are potentially dangerous to people and dangerous to other dogs and wild animals that should be muzzled and kept on a lead at all times when they're out that's not a problem that's responsible dog ownership okay but by saying that you're just going to stipulate a certain breed of dog has to be handled in that way and you leave all the others open to people to do what they want that's not going to make people safer so i think the problem here is the way you're going about it uh, responsible dog ownership responsible licensing ensuring that people have to pay and that money is wisely used by government to ensure that we can look at the behavior of animals where it's a problem give dog wardens the resources they need for local authorities to deal with dogs that are being released onto the streets and make sure that people take dog ownership seriously that's really important mm -hmm. I'm going to want to bring in Stan Rawlinson in a second, but I just there's just so many messages about this. No healthy animals should be put to sleep, says Rachel. I don't know how these XL Billy dogs can be kept safely. Uh, Stacey says, Peter, lots of XL Billies are bred from an extremely inbred line from in America. Inbred dogs are genetically prone to idiopathic aggression. Dogs can attack for any reason, including neurological issues, illness, inbreeding overbreeding and all nothing to do with bad ownership and a dog with rage syndrome it's devastating a bully breed it's changed my views on dogs well let's find out the view of stan rawlinson who is a dog behaviorist i want to keep dominic in the conversation but let's talk to St stan as well stan um what do you think of this sort of licensing plan that has been there and, and then it goes further in about a month's time as well in terms of basically a ban on XL Billy Dog. Stan, what do you make of what the government is proposing and what will be enacted in just a few hours' time? Uh, good morning, Peter. Morning. Uh, I actually uh, agree with your other caller uh, with bringing in a specialised license, licensing system that will in, 
encompass some of these dogs that can be extremely dangerous. And I agree with what he's saying. They are um, yeah, they are very reactive, these dogs. And some of your other messages coming in are absolutely right. The problem with these dogs is uh, the killing of... I'm an expert witness under the Dangerous Dogs Act when it first started in 1991. It hasn't worked then. It's not going to work now. We don't have the infrastructure to be able to do it. The, this country is full of banned breeds, and yet no one's taking them out. So the banning of them will not work. I believe a specialised licensing system that is actually in place in many other countries, one of them, uh, Spain, has been in particularly effective and uh, they license not just the dog they license the owner and the breeder and that's really important a lot of this comes from the breeders and there's some very highly reactive dogs that are being bred because they're highly reactive people want that sort of dog why i could not tell you because i don't want one of those dogs in my house however uh, I don't think uh, a ban or a full euthanization, I've never called for this. A lot of people think I have, but I haven't ever called for a ban because I'm against the ban because it doesn't work. Stan, I want, uh, to, get, I want to get, oh, sorry to interrupt you. I just want to get your thoughts on what one of our texters, well, two of our texters actually. Chris in Newbury says, I don't care if somebody next door has a license for a dog that could kill me and my children. I'm sure a drug dealer will bulk at 250 quid for a license. That was uh, along the lines, a little bit more than what Dominic was saying, but along those lines, all XL billies should be put down. It's really simple, says Chris in Newbury. But what I really want your thoughts on, Stan actually, and maybe Dominic as well, is Laney in Hertfordshire, who says, I have a one-year-old staffy. She is 19 inches tall and not as muscular as an XL billy, but I don't know what I should be doing. I do not believe she is an XL but it would be a matter of opinion, even a DNA test would not work as XL is not a breed. I'm worried sick and terrified someone will take my dog. What do you think, Stan? What would you say to Laney? If it's a standard um, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, then it will not be anywhere near the size of an XL bully. An XL bully has to be at the shoulders, the withers, 20 inches for a male and 19 inches for a female. The standard uh savageable terrier in this country is far smaller than that if that dog has been crossed with a number of other dogs it could be bigger and therefore it's not really a staffy it's a crossbreed uh so what she first thing she needs to do is measure the dog up to the top of the shoulders the withers if it's if it's a male 20 inches if it's female 19 inches she should look up the government's guidelines on this, the government's guidelines are a bit woolly, they're a bit open-ended, and I understand her confusion on this, and it needs to be far more specific. And by the way, it's so important, I, I agree with that guy that said, I don't care if I've got living next door to someone who's got this potentially dangerous dog, whether they've got a license, but I don't think he understands when I'm saying it's a license. They're not just going to get a piece of paper, they're going to be vetted as well. Mm. The, the people, I believe the requirements uh, for the dogs, uh, if they're the type of dogs that are attack dogs that have been attacking a lot lately and things like that, they should be on the list. Dogs with strong jaws and wide mouths, dogs with bulky heads, but the requirement of the owner, proof of identity, passport or driving license, proof of having no criminal convictions, proof of being mentally and physically capable of looking after one of these dogs. And that's, a, that's a lot of regulation. Let me just bring in Dominic Dyer in terms of what Stan is saying there. Dominic, a final word from you in terms of what Stan is proposing there. Quite a lot of regulation I, and I and think Stan's there. right. I think, you know, he is right. And he, he would have been right back in 1992 when the lawyers were sort of looking at the list of dogs to put on that piece of legislation, not when I was back in the civil service. I just don't think we're dealing with the problem. Yeah, yeah, it is complex. Uh, of course, there's lots of different types of dogs. They're all potentially dangerous. Um, but there are certain breeds that are more dangerous because of their physical stature or because of the way they've been bred. And you need to introduce a licensing system that makes a, a, a very significant level of responsibility of ownership, maybe similar to like having a shotgun license. Let's be clear about that. You know, exactly. so you are checking the mental ability of the person, the responsibilities, regular police checks and all the rest of it. You know, that we sh we've got to safeguard women 
women, children, and adults that are being killed by dogs and seriously injured. But also, we've got to be fair to dog owners, and we've got to look at the animal welfare issues around what we've got here. This is a poor piece of legislation. It's been made worse by adding this dog that's not specified as a breed to the list. There'll be huge suffering, and lots of people will dodge this legislation. They won't do what is being required of them. And the people that we're really trying to get control of, some of the more criminal elements that use dogs as dangerous weapons, they're not going to take any notice of this. They're still going to be out there. So I'm with Stan on that. I just think we need to cooperate and think more clearly about how we can actually okay. deal with it. Thank you both very, very much indeed. That's Dominic Dyer, who's an animal welfare campaigner, and Stan Rollinson, who is a dog behaviourist. Thank you both for your thoughts on that. I want your thoughts as well. 0344 499 1000. Lots of people getting in touch uh, on messages as well. Gary and Worthing says, you drive a car, you wear a seatbelt, you walk your dog, you use a dog muscle. Simple as that, says Gary. Uh, why on earth should there be a £150, £200 dog licence? Most uh, of these um, idiots... Uh, with dangerous dog dogs, for most of these idiots with dangerous dogs, money seems to be no object. Licenses and a database should be free and not based on money. Chris says, OK, let's have all dangerous dog owner a new law. Your dog kills, the owner goes to prison for murder. I'm sure they will all sign up for tomorrow because it's not the dogs, it's always the owner. Trish says, regarding bully dogs, the only answer is a muzzle for every dog, not just bullies. Simple and effective, says Trish. Brian says a licensure registration document won't stop a dog attacking. Cliff says, I wonder if the answer is to ban certain people from keeping dogs. If we can ban someone from driving, we should be able to ban those convicted of violence, drugs, burglary or gang-related offences from keeping dogs. And harsh sentences for those to be found ignoring an order. My favourite breed, by the way, is a Rhodesian Ridgeback. My favourite breed is Rescue uh, Cliff. Uh, on that note, Dawn in Chelmsford has been in touch. She says, hi, Peter, my brother Jeff who lives in Plymouth, told me that he and his wife had visited a cat cafe. Apparently cats sit on your lap. Are you aware of cat cafes? Yes, I am. I've actually been to one, but I'm not sure really what I think of them, although I did read about a cat pub in Bristol as well. And there's a pub actually not too far away from the Talk TV offices that has three cats, and they are looked after extremely well. If you've got a view on the XL Bully uh, controversy, we have lots of people who want to get in, and we will get as many people in as possible between now and 1 o'clock. I want you to use the break to give us a ring, 0344 499 1000 and we're going to be talking about the darts as well in just a second stay with us we're here thanks for joining us you're with talk tv on tv on radio online we're on your smart speaker as well Criminals to use the XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. 
This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. So. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going going to, to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, can you? you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. Bit of a sensation in the sporting world last night. We've got Luke Littler, who is only 16 years old, the darts player, who is now in the quarterfinals of the World Championships. Tom Clayton is a talk sport reporter and is with us now. Tom, the nation is gripped. It is, and I'm gripped completely. I was meant to go to bed nice and early last night to, you know, be prepared to come in for my shift this morning, and I could not take my eyes off the screen. It was absolutely fascinating viewing because when Luke Littler was born, 20 days before that, Raymond Van, Barn Van Barneveld won his fifth world title, his first to the PDC. And um, last night they played against each other. And to say that he beat him is an understatement. Luke Littler wiped the floor, absolutely wiped the floor with Raymond Van Barneveld. Um, and look, I think, you know, the man that we know as Barney, uh, you know, the, the five-time world champion, he was very magnanimous in defeat. And he said, look, I hope you go on and win it. I'll, he said, said that to him on stage. And he said, you can go all the way. I hope you can go all the way. Yeah. And uh, apparently Luke Litter said, thank you. He is a true gentleman and I respect Raymond. He, he, That's nice, isn't it? He did. And you know what? There's so much respect in the darts community and it's a very respectful sport. A lot of them get on quite well with each other. They practice and train with each other. But there's there's a video that Luke Little released before the match yesterday where he was effectively showing him as a three-year-old <laughs> replicating Raymond van Barneveld in the World Arts Championships, doing the celebration that Barney's become very famous for with the arms kind of outstretched. And it, it was it was great to see. And I love that we can have that in 2023. And in previous years, it might have been a bit like, OK, well, it's a bit gimmicky. But this year, he he's come to play. He has come to absolutely do damage. And he's done just that. <clears throat> just that, excuse me. And he... You know, Luke Littler, I think there's, there's a lot more to, to come watch as well. I mean, he nine, is. What was it, 980s that he, that yeah. he scored? Yeah, 9 180s. And, you know, he's a power scorer. He was Sorry, I've got to set 180. There you go. Uh, he, but he's a power scorer. He's, he's exceptional on his doubles. The fact that this lad is 16 years old is frightening. Yeah. Absolutely, fr I think about what I was doing when I was sixteen, and it it's not doesn't, all about you, Tom. It doesn't pale in comparison. <laughs> it doesn't pale in comparison. He is a, a real sensation. So, what happens next? Then, tell us when. When's the the next one? Yeah, so we take a break today because, of course, it's New Year's Eve. So, play resumes tomorrow. We get all four quarterfinals tomorrow. Luke Littler will be playing against Brendan Dolan, who's taken some big big scouts in this Northern Irish of course as well Brendan Dolan so one that you might be keeping an eye on maybe and uh, yeah he, so he goes on to that he's got a semi-final then again if he wins that quarter-final he gets to play against uh, Chris Dobie or uh, former world champion Rob Cross which will be just a fascinating side of the draw because all four of those um, only Rob Cross has been to a world championship final and he won it so a massive massive opportunity for the others and it really, really, I'm just so excited for the yeah. for the sort of climax of this. Well, World of course, well, what, whatever happens, it's a great British success Absolutely. story, isn't and it? it's live on Talk Sport too, as well, so you can hear all the action. And you know what? We've been saying this: darts works on the radio. It's fantastic. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much indeed. That's Tom Clayton there, Talk uh, Sport reporter, and uh, you can get all the action on Talk Sport too. Of course, we'll continue to cover it here on uh, Talk TV as well. Really great story about Luke Litter there, hammering Raymond von Barneveld uh, to reach the quarter finals. XL Bullies, big, big story today. Lots of people want to talk about it. Thank you to Marion County Down. He says the texture Brian calling for all dogs to be muzzled has the sort of hysterical attitude that drives unfair government action like the XL Bully legislation. The number of listeners calling for all dogs to be muzzled is really depressing. These people clearly hate dogs, says Mary in County Down. Bob says uh, all this talk about putting these dogs to sleep because they're dangerous. I can think of many human animals that should be treated in the same way. You probably won't just read this out, but hey ho, no harm in trying. Uh, says Bob. Well, I'm not uh, for putting people down, uh, uh, Bob, but it's it's a, it's an opinion.
Um, thank you to the person who has texted in and says, I have a German Shepherd who has now been professionally trained on an e-collar due to the size and strength. He has perfectly behaved on walks and totally under control. Why is the government trying to ban this type of training instead of making it compulsory for these breeds? Mike in York says, Peter, great show. Thanks. The XL bully issue is simple. If they're deemed to be a dangerous breed, they should be treated exactly the same as other dangerous animals. The UK's laws are clear about the ownership of such creatures. They must be licensed and maintained in a manner which ensures the safety of people. If that doesn't happen, the animal is destroyed and the owner banned from owning other animals. Thank you to Mike for that. You can join the debate. 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. 87222 on text. Be sure to put the word talk in your text so it comes up on the screen in front of me. Text me on uh, 87222 as I say or you can tweet me at Talk TV or follow me at Peter Cardwell. We're going to come back to some calls on that in just a minute but I want to talk about the weather first of all because it is pretty bad in many parts of of the country and uh, the weather uh, chaos uh, experts forecasting 75 mile an hour winds amid tornado warnings after heavy rain leaving towns and cities flooded. We actually heard from uh, one of our regular callers, Matt in Cheshire, was talking about his street and the tornado that was there. Um, heavy rain uh, a forecast as well, a 260 mile stretch of Britain slapped with a tornado warning lasting until the early hours of this morning as well. A uh, specialist forecaster predicting cyclones saying that one yellow, yellow weather warning issued by the Met Office in some regions. Heavy downpours expected to cause travel chaos. We were talking to Simon Calder about that a little bit earlier on. Let's talk to Nathan Rao who's a weather presenter. Nathan, thanks for joining us. What is Hello, coming up in the, next, uh, in the next 24 hours or so do you think? I mean, Peter, from what you've just said, it sounds absolutely horrific with tornadoes and cyclones and storms. Thankfully, we have missed it just by the skin of our teeth. It is going to calm down ever so slightly. As you mentioned, the Met Office have just in the last hour issued a wind warning for the south and the southwest. That is really for the West Country, for, for Somerset, Cornwall, that sort of area, and a rain warning for Wales. But what we're seeing is an incredibly stormy end to 2023 we've had seven named storms since since autumn which is when they start naming the storm seasons um, and we had the last one which was storm garrett which whipped up that tornado as you were talking about in manchester and there are further warnings in place now it is going to settle down slightly which is good news for today is certainly for people traveling for new year's eve however it is going to be wet and windy certainly in the south certainly in the southwest certainly in the west up in Scotland, it might be a bit better, but wherever you go, really, you know, take some precautions and watch out for some pretty nasty weather to see in 2024. Well, that's a wonderful way to end the year. Nathan, thank you very much indeed. Nathan Rowe there is a weather presenter. Welcome. Thank you very much and Happy New Year to you. Lots of people getting in touch with XL Bullies. One of them is Lee in the West Midlands. Uh, Lou, Lee, is it true your son was attacked by a, a, a bully dog? Uh, is that is that what happened? Called you light, uh, light early autumn late summer i think my yeah. my lad was attacked in june okay. by uh, a friend's pocket bully which is a smaller mm -hmm. version uh he's 13 he's nearly six foot tall and uh the dog bit chunks out of his legs his ankles he had plastic surgery about 30 stitches on the outside 40 odd on the inside to close the wounds up um i was first one there with his friend was with him they couldn't get the dog off um i don't know about banning these things but uh i've never seen anything like it in my life i mean this thing's about two and a half feet tall three feet at the most yeah. and uh how's your son now he's not good he's, he's not good he's totally changed actually um his school work has dropped uh he wakes up every night <coughs> um screaming the house down um he has nightmares in his about sleep. it in his, in his, yeah yeah in his sleep uh he's petrified of dogs we just lost our uh, family dog cocker spaniel and uh, we, we've always had dogs and um i'm in the middle of sutton park at the moment and there's hundreds and hundreds of dogs around me and uh even i'm wary now of of these these bully type dogs not stuffy so much but uh the bigger dogs they're they're on chains for a start. A lot of the owners have got them on a chain, which saves a lot. Mm. But yeah, my my lad, uh, there were chunks missing. They, were, they weren't even there. The dog had eaten those pieces. They were gone forever. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, luckily the 
he went to the children's hospital in Birmingham and they had plastic surgeons there from a, an operation during the day. And they stayed over to to uh, to to sort him out, but it was absolutely horrific. The room he was in, he was only went to play on the concert or with his friend for an hour, and uh, yeah, it's life changing. Life changing. I don't know about banning them, but they something needs to be done because they they. Lethal weapons on the end of a lead, really. And if they're not what would you lead, do if you could wave a magic wand? You could do whatever you want with these animals, Lee. What would you do? <clears throat> Muzzle, registered and insured. Definitely insured. Um, a muzzle, I think it'd be difficult to get a muzzle on some of these animals. Their, their heads are so wide, but somebody needs to either manufacture them. They should be, they've got to be muzzled. It's got to be muzzled. Even with a muzzle on, they're so powerful. Um, but yeah, it's affected my family in a big, big way. Uh, it's it's changed the whole dimensions of our, our makeup. We, we're all there together. But he, he, when I ask him, I spend a lot of time taking him to football and whatever. When I ask him, he, he said he could still feel the dog biting him, and yeah, that's what way. affects him the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 couldn't get it, couldn't get the dog off him. Um, horrendous. And, and these, these are a good family. They will, everybody's saying to about the owners. The owners were decent owners. What's um, your relationship with, like with them now, Lee? Uh, I mean, just, well, we just, haven't got just, one, I'll put it that way. We don't, we don't really... We yeah. don't. He sees his friend. He's a, he's a good friend, actually, one of his best friends. And, um, yeah, it's nothing tough. really... It's tough. Nothing it's, really it's tough on him as well, because when you're you know when you're a kid uh, or a young person you know I, I'm sure it's really affected that I'm, I don't want you to talk about something you're not happy to talk about Lee but I'm sure it's affected well it has affected that friendship as well even though it's not the friend's fault well, well actually give him some some credit um, he's a friendly lad he's got hundreds of friends and all, everybody wanted to know whose dog had you know done this thing he hasn't told a single person not one right wow okay uh, so uh, that's the sort of lad he is. He doesn't yeah. want to cause any trouble to anybody. But his schoolwork has definitely dropped. Yeah. His attitude towards school has dropped. Um, he's a, been a high achiever, really. But now it's he's sort of uh, not not doing bad. But he's yeah. definitely affected him. His attitude to everything, really. He's um, yeah. We get glimmers of him coming back as as he used to be. But on the whole, he's changed. And it was just this one, mm -hmm. one, three just minute one instant, attack. Yeah. Yep. Well, Lee, so. I wish you well and I wish your son well. And thanks for speaking so honestly and, and straightforwardly to us about this. Uh, you're clearly a very reasonable person um, who's been through an absolutely horrendous time. So thank you, Lee. I want to go to Demi in Edinburgh now, who has adopted an XL bully dog a few weeks ago, Demi. Is that right? Yes, it is, yeah. Four weeks ago. And how's that been for you? You're very welcome to the programme, by the way. Oh, hello. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, I wouldn't change him for anything. He's such a softy. He's easy to train. Um, I've just not had any problems with him. And I'm I'm a major dog lover. Um, and I've had previous breeds of the real breed. And it's it's how the owner trains them. It's 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 not every dog. Like as I said, you can't you can't judge a book by its cover. Well, you can't judge a dog by its look. Where did you then, Where did you adopt the dog from, Tammy? Was it a rescue centre or? Yeah, it was rescue. It was um, old bully charity rescue, um, and I had, I do have a son, and he's three year old, and but he's been brought up with dogs. I've been brought up with dogs. Mm -hmm. I've trained dogs. I've worked with. I was a postie for over twelve years, and I've never in our whole time we've been a postie in our region. There's not that many bull breeds uh, attack. It's Labradors mm -hmm. and Jack Russells and mongrels and. You know, I, I've never once in my life been bit by a uh, bull breed. Um, Do you understand you know, why people might be scared of your dog? Right? You've adopted your dog. You've done the right thing. You've adopted and not shopped. So thank you for doing that, Demi. Yes, um, yes. And, I, I mean, there, you will go out walking with your dog and there will be people who will maybe cross the street or will be worried about the fact that you're an XL Billy owner. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've, obviously I've thought that, you know, and obviously I've got my son. And But it, the way I see it is, I wouldn't have my dog if he was aggressive or if he had bit anybody or there was previous. Like, if, if I've if I seen my dog's behaviour change into an aggressive way, then 
you know, I would do the right things because my son is number one, you know, and yeah, of the, course. the safety of people. But there are bound to be people as well saying, Dammy, you've got a three-year-old, why are you bringing an XL bully into that situation? What do you think yeah, about yeah. that? What, how do you reply to them? When as they... I said, like, I, I am experienced with mm -hmm. owning dogs and owning bull breeds. My my mum has an American bull and she's 11 year old and she's been brought up with my brother's kids. And, you know, there's always kids and she's the biggest softie. And, you know, I would trust her um, more than what I would trust her with some humans, you know, yeah, because yeah, yeah. The humans are the problem here. It's, mm -hmm. you know, the, the police, especially, obviously, we don't have, we have our own laws in Scotland, you know. So, obviously, down in England and Wales, like, I think the major problem is, is the police and that need to sort out the, the backyard breeders, mm -hmm. the, the drug dealers that are using these dogs to protect their houses, yeah. you know. And that is the problem because at the end of the day, when a dog is born, just like a child is born, you teach them how to be, you know. If you teach your child to hit people and be, be horrible, then that child is going to do that. And it's mm -hmm. the same with a dog. Like, I teach my dog that, you know, command and he's ill learned because that's what I'm teaching him. If but there's I so many him, people who are not nearly as responsible as you, Dami. There's so no, many. There's not. You know, you're you're awful. clearly you've thought this through. You've gone through the mo you've gone through all the process. You're clearly mm -hmm. someone who's a very intelligent person who's dealing with these dogs, who has lots of experience. But there are lots of people who get these XL bullies and other dogs, but especially XL bullies in this particular example for bad reasons and, and you're yeah. tarred with that brush aren't but you? But they will, they will move to another breed, they already have moved to another breed mm -hmm. um, I just think that the government have rushed too much into this um, without thinking of the consequences because if you have a family pet, your ex will be in your house that is used to getting locked two three times a day, it's used to having freedom and meeting other people and meeting dogs and you've not had a problem with your dog and then to have to muzzle your dog. It's not allowed to socialise with anybody else. It's locked in a house basically all the time. Like the anxiety of people, especially people with mental health, is going to go through the roof because they're going to be nervous, which then puts that through into the dog. Yes. So then the dog's going to start reacting. Like they've not looked into, like, they've not looked into it properly. Like mm. they really haven't. Okay. And there's going to be so many that suffer and obviously so many that are going to get put to sleep on the way that they look. And it shouldn't be like that because the way I see it is that's racism to dogs. Like we wouldn't put somebody to sleep because of their colour or the way that they look. But because they're dog, the way it looks, they, they think, oh, let's put that to sleep because it's going to attack. No. Like, Demi, some, some very, very strong points from you. Thank you very much. It was a great call. Uh, another great call from Lee as well, just directly before you. Thank you for those. Lots of people uh, getting in touch. Let me read a few texts before we go to another couple of callers. Linda says, Hi, Peter. Thank goodness someone is talking about the damage these dogs can cause. Some people have been killed, for goodness sake. It's the job of the government to protect the public. What are they supposed to do? Uh, Stephanie says, uh, Peter, how can anyone even think about voting Labour, the architects of the demise of our country? The Tories have been too lazy and inept to turn it around. Margaret Thatcher had more uh, cojones, shall we say, than all of them put together, utterly dismayed by the entire establishment and their betrayal of British people. It will come back to haunt them. Uh, on XL Billy Dogs, again, Joe in Belfast says, I'm very upset about this Billy Dog situation. Your guest, Dominic, has been very sensible in his comments. The thought of killing a healthy dog is awful. I feel the thugs who breed and train in inverted commas, these dogs, for devious reasons, should be found and dealt with properly like any other criminal. These dogs, like any dog, do not ask to be forced into attacking. Some humans are a total disgrace. Joe, I agree with you. Lisa in uh, Brum says all they had to do was target the breeders. It would stop the problem at source, put the responsibility onto the breeders to ensure <clears throat> that all puppies go to responsible homes. In my opinion, all dog breeding should be banned until every shelter is empty. It's a strong view, Lisa, but I absolutely agree with you. Uh, banning breeds doesn't work. The only people who comply with the legislation are responsible owners, while the abusive ones just carry on as usual. Lisa, lots of interesting uh, thoughts there. Not everybody's going to agree with you, but I do. Brian says, your previous dog behaviour expert talks rubbish. Is he suggesting if a male dog with a shoulder width under 20 inches is not an XL bully and therefore not as dangerous, if the male has a shoulder width of just 19.5 inches, I assume it's an XL bully and uh, will not be covered, an X bully and will not be covered by the new law. It's ridiculous, says Brian. Well, listen, I, I think what Stan was doing there was quoting what the law is. It's not Stan himself, it's what the legislation is. Uh, Chris says, Debbie knows all the arrogance of XL Billy owners. She thinks she can control a dog who can kill her three-year-old child so much she's willing to put a breed that killed nine people in her home. Well, listen, it, it's Demi rather than Debbie, Chris, but yeah, I, I, she's thought it through. She's 
a lot of experience with these dogs. I personally wouldn't do it, but that is her choice, and she's doing so in as responsible a way. I mean, she sounds like someone from what that phone call I had with her only spoke to her for five minutes, but she sounds like someone who's really properly thought this through. Chris, but clearly uh, you have a very strong opinion on this, as many other people do. Final text for the meantime, someone says, I think there needs to be education towards all dogs and licensing for owners at their expense. A dog's an investment on a family member, not an object, or get a cat. Well, a cat is also an investment. It's also a family member in my family anyway. And it's also not an object. So, yeah, it's a fair point. Let's talk to Carol in London. Final call before the break. Carol, you're very welcome to the programme. What would you like to say? Hi, Peter. Um, well, I, I agree with the people who are saying that it's the owners, not the dogs. However, some dogs, and this is a fact, have a very much stronger prey drive. Mm. So what happens is they go after smaller animals. And what I've seen in this, most of the news is that a lot of people who've been attacked by bullies have been attacked because they have little dogs with them. They're walking their dogs. And the, the bully dogs are, have their prey drive and they're going after the smaller dogs. And then the owners get involved and everybody gets bitten. The thing is that when, the other day they had a, a, a walk um, in Maidstone, I think, for all these bullies. And you can see a lot of those owners are men and they're pulling on the dogs and the dogs are straining on their leashes and running ahead of their, their owners. Lots of dogs that do that, Carol. Lots of dogs straining on the leash. No, that, is, that must be trained out of the dog. OK, but I mean, that lots of dogs do that of, of, all, of all breeds. Yes, but you, you can train it out of a dog. Okay. Your dog must never run in front of you. It has to walk behind you or next to you. Okay. Right. But there are lots of... Uh, uh, the, the other thing is, I believe all pet dogs should be neutered. That should be a law. Because the minute you neuter them, you take a lot of the aggression mm. out of the dog. So mm. if they're all neutered and they're all walked on leash, they shouldn't be a problem. I don't think all dogs should be muzzled. That's, I think, a bit much. Obviously, if you know your own dog, if it's a big dog and, and it might have a, a problem with smaller animals, because it normally starts with smaller animals, then put a leash on your dog. Okay. But if it's a smaller dog, and, and as long as it's on a leash, you've got its control. Yeah, well, the, those... I allow a dog to run all over the place. Now, I live next to a common. I have a small dog. I have a chihuahua. And he's blind. And he's always on a leash, but he's terrified of bigger dogs. And I walk along, and a big dog comes and sniffs my dog, and my dog turns around and snaps at the dog. Mm. When I look around, there's no owner for this big dog. Mm. I yeah. don't care what, what breed it is. I, I know what you mean. And people, and owners do need to be responsible, Carol. And that, is, that, is, that is, I think, the thrust, perhaps, of, of your point there. Tony in London says all fighting dogs should have a muzzle and owners have to have insurance. The cost of insurance would instantly stop them of thinking and owning these dogs that are for their own ego status. Uh, those talking about muzzling clearly do not know anything about dogs, says another messenger. Uh, can you imagine them not e being able to play a fetch in the park or play with another dog? It's cruel. Different legislation is required. And Jane in Yorkshire says... Peter, the problem is that if an XL flips, it doesn't just nip, it moulds. People die, says Jane in Yorkshire, who sends much love to the programme. Well, thank you, Jane, that's very kind. We're going to continue talking about this. We're also going to talk about the science of beer goggles. It's New Year's Eve, so that might be relevant to you. Coming up next. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. 
For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Thank you to Melissa, who has tweeted me to say, loving your show. Thank you, Melissa. Appreciate that. Regarding Axel bullies, the definition of a bully is a blustering, browbeating person, especially habitually cruel, insulting or threatening to others who are weaker, smaller, and in some way vulnerable, tormented by the neighbourhood bully. Tony says, hi, Peter. The problem with all these dogs, dog owners is that they do not use choke chains because they believe it is cruel, and they are woke snowflakes. All dogs need to be trained using a choke chain. A dog will pull if it's being strangled. I don't want to strangle a dog, Tony. Um, but then I'm not a dog owner and I don't know about these things, so um, maybe that is the right thought. Let us know your thoughts, 0344 499 1000. Danny says over 600 people were murdered by other people in 2023. Nine people were killed by XL bullies in three years, just saying. Uh, another texter says, now, uh, sorry, talking to posties, uh, 33 people are attacked by dogs every week. Nothing on the news about that. If your dog attacks anyone, you should be banned from keeping dogs forever. I'm not sure I agree with that, to be honest. Um, it depends on the attack. It depends on a lot of things. We're going to return to this. Get your calls in 0344 499 1000. We'll talk as much as you want to talk about it between now and 1 o'clock here on Talk TV. But I want to talk about something different. This is a piece of research from the University of Portsmouth. It has questioned 99 men and women aged between 18 and 62 in a pub to test how people rate looks after a few drinks. I am not a drinker, as you may know, but there will be a lot of people having a tipple or two or three. Uh, in fact, one member of our team is going to a place where there is a case of champagne. Uh, that, those are the kind of circles he moves in uh, tonight. And Dr Alistair Harvey from the University's Department of Psychology, University of Portsmouth, says, alcohol is a strong predictor of sexual behaviour, often consumed before or during dates. Wow, I'm so glad he has a PhD. Uh, there are a range of possible reasons why alcohol drinkers are more inclined to engage in sex, including lack of inhibition, heightened expectations, personality traits and the beer goggles effect. So he's looking into whether beer goggles is a thing. Due to the limited research on this topic, oh look there's an academic wants more money for more research, we ran a field experiment to help determine why people often experience an unexpected and regretted sexual escapades after having one too many. Uh, the study has been published in the Journal of Psychopharmacology. Uh, I, I can't say I'm a subscriber, but there we are, uh, found that while alcohol did impair face symmetry detection, which is apparently uh, if someone's face looks more symmetrical, they're more attractive to you, it did not influence the judgments of attractiveness. The term beer goggles has been used for decades to describe when a person finds themselves attracted to another person while intoxicated but not sober. One possible explanation is that alcohol impairs the drinker's ability to detect 
special asymmetry. My goodness, this is more than I've ever uh, known or, uh, uh, before about this. Wendy Gregory is a psychologist. Wendy, thank you for joining us on this. Good morning, uh, Peter. What Good morning. do you make of it? Well, there's been lots of studies actually about um, the beer goggles or beauty is in the eyes of the beer holder. I think it was the last research was done in about 2012. Um, they don't, they haven't really shown a connection between the, the symmetry and asymmetry thing and the levels of attraction. But what alcohol does do is it relaxes you and it makes it more likely that you're going to actually approach somebody that you already find attractive. It does also, it, there are some physical effects and um, facial effects which are unconscious. And as we know, more than 80% of communication is, is nonverbal. So for example, when you drink alcohol, your pupils dilate. Well, as humans, we, without realizing it, we pick up when someone else's pupils dilate. And that is a, can be a sign of desire, of sexual arousal. So if also people, when they've had a few, they tend to be more relaxed, they smile a lot more, they laugh a lot more. Most of us are attracted to people who are smiley faces <laughs> or you know, are laughing and seem like fun people. But something that I think hasn't been mentioned, which, which I picked up on straight away when I read this story, is that when we've had a few, we tend to be more touchy-feely. Most people are. I don't mean in an inappropriate way, but people tend to come give you a hug, you know, maybe work colleagues that you wouldn't really hug in the office. And when you touch somebody physically like that, it stimulates the production of oxytocin. And oxytocin makes you bond with people. So you feel more comfortable with that person straight away. And often, you know, it can be a big mistake because with the, the disinhibition, you, you stop reading the red flags. You know, they become a bit blurred, the warning signs. So we can put ourselves sometimes in very you know, unsafe situations. Um, you know, you don't know if that person's going to kill you and turn you into a lampshade when you get back to theirs. Yes. <laughs> Especially if you've never met them before. So, you know, there, there's all kinds of reasons why it might seem that people become more sexually active. Also, um, alcohol uh, raises testosterone levels in both males and females, and testosterone stimulates sexual desire. So it might make you feel a bit more frisky when you have a few. Goodness me. OK, well, there are lots and lots, lots of factors there. So beer goggles, perhaps just 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 one of them. Um, <laughs> excuse me. I mean, this is this is fascinating that there is academic research on this, that people have been uh, that money has been uh, given to it. Uh, further research is apparently needed to find the missing piece in the puzzle, says the University of Portsmouth. Would you support further research being done into this, Wendy? sure there is a missing piece really Peter. <laughs> alcohol, alcohol reduces cortical control and the cortex is the part of the brain that's responsible for logical thought making sensible decisions that sort of thing and it reduces the ability of the cortex to do that hence people sometimes very regrettably text their boss when they're drunk and call them a see you next tuesday and you know they wake up in the morning <laughs> What have I done? <laughs> it wasn't a good idea, probably. But at the time, it seems like a good idea. It might seem like a good idea, you know, to go home with someone you find sexually attractive, but you might not feel the same way in the morning. Very true. Well, we, I'm sure there will be a number of. Uh, people wondering what on earth they were up to tonight. Please be responsible, drink responsibly, uh, but enjoy yourself as well. Wendy Gregory is a psychologist. Um, I don't drink, and in fact, I will be in bed early, uh, Wendy, because I will be uh, presenting Thank breakfast you. tomorrow between 7 and 10. So it's, it's lonely up here on the moral high ground. Uh, oh. but, uh, but, but, uh, <laughs> but at least you won't be hungover, Peter. I won't be hungover. I'm, still, I'm struggling with my voice a little bit, but there we are. Wendy Gregory, psychologist. Thank you so much. Wendy, appreciate that. Uh, thanks also to, to Diane in West Yorkshire, who's texted me to say, morning, Peter, morning, Diane. Just a small point, but do you think extendable leads should be illegal? I and plenty of people, uh, including uh, children, walk in a local park and woodland paths with our dogs. I often see walkers with two and three large breeds uh, on, on leads, and clearly they can't control all of them at once. I once saw a guy with two pit bull type dogs actively encouraging them to run at a Jack Russell. He barked at them. As he passed, I immediately picked up my small leashed uh, Daxi, stupidly told him off. Luckily, he walked away uh, spouting a few expletives. This is a problem as well. If you call people out on this, if you say, actually, would you mind not doing that? Even if you do it on a, in a reasonable way, some people, can, you know, you, you might just be getting yourself into a situation which is not that desirable. Um, Barbara is in London. Has given me a call, 0344 499 1000. Barbara, you're very welcome to the programme. What would you like to say about XL Bullies? 
Um, well, this was many years, well, several years ago, seven to ten years ago, before all the fraud that's going on now, as it were. Um, I was outside Cafe Nero Chiswick, um, sitting there with my girlfriends having a cappuccino, etc. And our other girlfriend came along with the do- her dog that had joined us many times. Big dog. I don't know if it was a pit bull or statty or what it was. But it was a lovely dog. And we all used to pet it and stroke it and everything else. And she'd had it four years. And the dog's place, he used to curl up underneath the, t- the table as much as he could curl up because he was big. But uh, underneath the table, and we used to sit there and chat and all the rest of it. A lady walked by in Chiswick. Everybody goes around with their dogs on leads and they're in the park, obviously. A lady walked past us on the pavement and uh, with a little white poodle. Bloody hell. The dog went for it like that. The table went up in the air. The chairs went up in the air. The woman, the girl that had him on the lead... Uh, when it was pulled down, and that's it. He had he had the poodle. He he tore it in half. In seconds, there was blood everywhere. Yeah. All us girls screaming, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And any and any reason well, why you think it happened, or was it just the nature of the dog, or what was it, the? Yeah, it goes on. It was a white poodle. Probably thought it was a rat or something. I don't know. But it had never ever shown anything like that. And, and Chiswick's a very much a doggy area before the pandemic. Loads of dogs here. Um, and uh, all very well sort of trained. They keep it, you know, on the lead, et cetera, et cetera. But um, no, he just went for it. Wham! And as I said, the table went up in the air, the chairs went up in the air, the cup smashed everything. I mean, so strong. And that was it. And the woman, she was just stood there. And we, this was about 10, and 12 she was, years And she was a powerless, powerless act because of the, the strength, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, the, the, the woman with the poodle just... Well, just yeah. well, she didn't collapse, but she was ready for it. But the the, the young lady, because we were all 10, 15 years younger then, for 12 years younger then, um, she she still had them on on the lead and a thick lead and all that. But course, they were just too strong and unbelievable, unbelievable the strength. And because the the, the cafe Nero is right on top of the traffic lights. It's uh, the, the pavement's not that wide, but yeah. it's never ever anything like that before with yeah. dogs. It must have been very shocking for you. Well, yeah, but I take it with a pinch of salt sort of thing. But mm. uh, the other girls, I mean, well, all of us were screaming. Nothing we could do. That was it. Goodness blood me. everywhere. Okay, it well, was, thanks it, for... It, thanks. Was a ter- it was bad. It was yeah, bad. Yeah, well, but thanks. Well, it's a horrific bad. story, Barbara, but thank you so much for uh, sharing it with us, my goodness. There are lots of people who want to get in on this. If you want to uh, make your point as well between now and one o'clock, we will take more calls on XL Police and anything else you think you should, we should be talking about. 0344 499 1000 is the number you can call. You can text me at 7222 uh, with the word talk in your text. You can tweet me at Talk TV as well or follow me at Peter Cardwell on Twitter. Lots more to come, including a look ahead to the political year uh, with Joe Twyman. Stay with us. This is Talk TV. For the news that matters, for the opinions that matter, for the stories that matter, find me, Vanessa Phelps, every weekday at 4 pm, only on Talk, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. We're here! Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, or on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. The amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. 
Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast ah, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, can you? Use? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They've that won. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. I was getting used to my show What Just Happened being on Talk TV every Friday night at 10.30. They go and change it. I'm furious. They've moved it to 8.30 every Friday. Talk TV, What Just Happened. I am furious. Well, a very good afternoon. This is Talk TV. I'm Peter Cardwell with you for the next star between now and one. And Petri Hoskin will be taking over between one and four, so stay tuned for her. I'll also be back tomorrow morning at seven o'clock in the morning between seven and ten. I'm doing the breakfast show tomorrow. It will be a new year, New Year's Day, and it is, of course, New Year's Eve today. So whatever you're up to the rest of the day, I hope it's fun and I hope you have a great New Year's Eve as well. I'll also be back not just tomorrow between seven and ten, but also Tuesday evening between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. I'm going to be in the studio with, uh, presenting the primetime program in for Rosanna Lockwood and then co covering politics for the rest of the week as well. So not a dull time for me and not a dull year because politically three quarters of the democratic world is going to the polls in 2024. We're going to be talking to King of Polls, Joe Twyman, about that very shortly to see not just what he thinks based on current data will happen here in the UK, but also in other parts of the world as well. If you've any thoughts on this, any political thoughts, what you want from the elections next year, of course, not just happening in terms of a general election, there are local elections, there are municipal elections, the mayor of Manchester, the mayor of London are both being elected as well. Also, there's the American election. Donald Trump, could he be the candidate? Looks that way. We'll take more calls on XL Billy this hour, XL Billy's this hour as well. Lots of people want to get in on that. And if you have any questions on polling itself, we've got a bit of time with Joe, so let's get those questions in as well. Some people say, hold on a second, I've never been asked. What does this, what, what do these polls show? How do you know what the public thinks? Some people are very sceptical about polls. And Joe is very game, and he will take all your thoughts on that. So give us a call, 0344 499 1000. You can text us as well, 87222, with the word talk in your text, or you can tweet me at Talk TV uh, as well, and you can follow me at Peter Cardwell. Thanks to Jenny and Milton Keynes, he, uh, who has been in touch, uh, he says uh, perhaps the spinner Dominic's antics could rename him comings and goings. That's another big political controversy today. Front page of the Sunday Times on the Sunday Telegraph as well. And Jill has been in touch on dog licences. She says they're a good idea in principle, but will not prevent a tax. The people who have them uh, to breed at home or for status are too selfish to train them or secure them properly and won't buy a licence. It won't stop them escaping from gardens, getting loose from their owners, etc. And it will be expensive to administer for XL bullies, so it won't happen. There needs to be strict sentencing guidelines for owners whose dog attacks, whatever the outcome of the attack, and a complete ban on ownership on the guilty owner and his or her family. It's the people who are the problem, says Jill. Well, let us know your thoughts on that. That number again, 0344 499 1000. Let's spend the next hour together here on Talk TV.
Well, this is a big year. Well, sorry, tomorrow, when it's 2024, it will be a big year. We are guaranteed, Rishi Sunak says, the election will be held in 2024. It could have hypothetically happened in January 2025, but that he's ruled that out now. That was just what sometimes happens is you have things like the... Remember the foot and mouth crisis a few years ago? There were elections that had been moved and so on. So really that little extra month in January 2025 was just a bit of a buffer zone if there was any sort of problem. But Rishi Sunak has confirmed that the election will definitely be in 2024. We don't know when, though. Labour are certainly planning, senior Labour people I've been speaking to, planning for a May election. But, of course, if they do the planning for that, well, that the planning is then everything's in place then for when I think the election will actually be, which is probably in the middle of November. But... My predictions are usually wrong, so uh, we'll see uh, if I'm right this time. I am very much the Professor Neil Ferguson of Political Prediction. Remember him from COVID? He said, this is definitely going to happen, 100%. All these people are going to die. This is definitely going to happen. And he was wrong the whole time, and I am very much him. Uh, so we're going to talk to Joe Twyman now, the King of Pools, who is the uh, co-founder of Delta Pool, a big polling company in the UK. Joe, great to have you in the studio. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you, Peter. It's good to be here. Great to see you, and it is the last day of the year, and a what a political year <laughs> it has been, Joe. Won't at, at, at some well, there was a couple of stages that out there in the talk TV newsroom. I was just going, won't somebody stop the news? It just never stopped, did it? Yeah, it's it's been quite a uh, quite a year, but uh, but of course next year is the really big one. Yes, and uh, and of course all of the all of the events and uh, and the movements that we've seen over the last twelve months could pale into ex insignificance compared to uh, compared to next year because actually when you look at the polls this last year gone, some of them really haven't moved at all. They have actually been quite static, haven't they? And often you have, oh, uh, you know, Labour 17 points ahead, Labour 19 points ahead, Labour 23 points ahead. I mean, there's not that much difference in that. The, when was the last time the Conservatives had a lead in a poll? Uh, the last time they had a lead at all was December 2021. Wow. So it's an extremely long time. And they haven't been within double digits of Labour since September 2022. So, so they haven't had a lead in any major poll in, in two years? Any published poll. Any published poll in, in two in years? years yeah wow. uh, and th along the way things have fluctuated it's worth remembering for instance that in the run-up to uh in the run-up to the summer around about sort of june time the conservatives did get it back to around about 11 12 points and the direction of travel looked to be in their favor but then we had that period of time with boris johnson's resignations and nadine doris's uh, uh sort of resignation pseudo uh, pseudo resignation it went back to 20 points and uh, and that has really been the uh, been the story of the conservatives year that at each stage when it looks like they might be making some headway uh, some headway like they might be actually clawing something back something happens and uh, and it's you're back to a 15 20 point lead for events, later dear boy events tell me from rishi sunak's perspective what works for him politically what are the things that give him a pull bump and are those the things that just always work anyway if you do a big tax cut or something like that is that always something that, that, well, something that often is the reason for polls uh, going in favour of one person? So just explain a little bit about what works for Rishi Sunak and explain a bit what works for Keir Starmer as well, because a lot of people sort of say, well, actually, hold on a second. Keir Starmer is kind of, it's sort of like a tennis match. His opponent is losing. It's not really him winning. Occasionally over the last 12 months, Rishi Sunak has managed to get small bumps and they've tended to be based around uh, competency and when he's looked like, uh, looked like a statesman on the, international, uh, on the international stage. The difficulty that he has is that those bumps have tended to be small and they've also tended to be short-lived. And what they haven't managed to do is change the fundamentals because we talked about the fact that, uh, uh, that yes, voting intention, which is what we pay the most attention to, has fluctuated between Labour having a lead of sort of 11 12 points sometimes a lead of 25 points and so there's clearly some movement uh, some movement there but when you look at things like leadership ratings you see that Rishi Sunak has consistently been on a downward trajectory mm -hmm. basically the entire year and at times he's been at, uh, at all-time lows and managed to uh, managed to recover uh, but in our most recent poll he's on a net score of minus 25 now that's not so good. just explain those net polls, because we talk about this quite a lot. So that's if you say 
do you have an, a favourable or unfavourable view of whichever politician it is, in this case Rishi Sunak? Yes. And you've right. got the net result. Well, just explain it. The net result is the number of people who uh, think he's doing a good job minus the number of people who think he's doing a bad job. Now, for comparison, Keir Starmer is on minus three in our most recent polls, and he fluctuates around net zero, uh, which, is, uh, which is ironic given all the focus on that and the environment. But, uh, but that's actually, by historical standards, quite a good score. It's no Tony Blair in the run-up to 1997, but it's still a good score. Rishi Sunak, minus 25. That means 25% more people think he's doing a bad job than a good job, and that's not a good situation to be in. To be not just that low, but that much lower than your opponent is problematic. But for me, the most interesting figure across the entire year has actually been one that's sometimes hidden further down the uh, polls, and that's who's best on the economy. So which party do you trust to manage the economic circumstances? I'm three of the five uh, pledges that Rishi Sunak says he wants to be judged on on the 4th of January are on the economy. And the reason for that is that it's such an important issue. When you ask people, what's the most important issue facing the country? What's the most important issue facing you and your family? It comes top by some distance. So this is interesting because we, uh, a lot of our viewers and listeners really really care about immigration, they really care about small boats. This is a discussion we have fairly often on this programme. But in your polling, and generally, what immigration isn't always the biggest issue. It's the economy, you're saying. NHS as well? It's not just our polling, it's everybody's polling essentially shows the same story and that is that the cost of living comes top by some distance you then have a second tier of issues which includes the economy generally which some people don't include to some people don't separate out from the cost of living but also the nhs and then you have a third tier of issues which is led by immigration but that is still generally speaking some way behind mm. the the economy so generally let in let the me NHS. just ask one more question on immigration particularly so you're saying these are obviously the the tiers of, of ways in which people are are thinking about it. So what proportion of people are, you know, if Rishi Sunak, he's not going to stop the boat, but on immigration, let's say there are lots of people say, actually, Rishi Sunak, rubbish on immigration. I think reform or the Labour Party or the Liberal Democrats, not quite sure why, uh, are better on immigration. I'm going to vote for them on immigration. What proportion of people would have that as their number one issue, or is that a very small proportion? It's not a, it's not a tiny proportion. Uh, around about a third of people say it's among the top three most important issues in the country. But there are very few people who will say, I'm not, I stopped voting Conservative because my mortgage rates increased significantly, my energy bills doubled, but now that I've heard Rishi Sunak has said something about small boats, I'm back voting yeah. Conservative. Yeah. Yeah. Those people are very, very small. That doesn't mean that immigration isn't important to millions of people, mm. but it's the relative importance versus the absolute importance. In other words, how it compares to to other issues rather than how important it is on its own that determines whether people uh, vote just based on that or not. Let me ask you as well, we have a lot of people who feel that polling isn't representative, that they, they've never been asked and they don't know anybody who's ever been asked these questions about what's important for the country, what's important to you and your family. And there are people who really don't uh, believe polls, quite frankly. Uh, you obviously work within rules. Um, tell us a little bit about how the process actually works, because are you are you ringing people up? Are you pulling them online? What what, what is, What's the sort of, both the, the sort of macro bit and the nitty gritty of how polling works? Well, in general terms, most polls nowadays are conducted online and people register to take part in surveys generally. And so anyone who do hasn't been contacted and desperately wants to be, can go on to many polling sites and register to take part in those surveys. But you are then <coughs> contacted by the company when they want to take uh, when they want to ask you questions and they will base that based on what we call a representative sample the right number of old people young people men women uh, people living in the south of england people living in the north people who voted for brexit people who voted remain people who voted conservative people who voted labor etc cetera, etc cetera, to ensure that it is representative of the country as a whole and many people say well i've asked all my friends and they all think that this subject is the most important or the one i always I, what I often get is, well, Facebook says this, or Facebook has told me this. Facebook is curated as an algorithm. It, they'll tell you what you want to hear. If you click on something, it'll give you more of it as well. So there are people on all sides of the political debate who are in a bit of an echo chamber sometimes. That's right. And, and we tend to be friends with people who have similar views to ourselves, not a broad representative sample of the, uh, of the population. And some people will say, you only speak to a 1,000 people. That's not, uh, that's not enough. But the theory behind that is to do with sampling. And it's like, uh, one way to think about it is like a bowl of soup. 
if you have a big bowl of soup and providing that soup is mixed sufficiently, you only need to take a teaspoon of that soup in order to work out what taste it is. Uh, the flavour comes just from that sample in the same way that it would come from the entire bowl. And so you really don't need to sample everyone in the same way that you don't need to eat all of the, uh, all of the soup. Or indeed, if you go for a blood test, they don't need to take all of your blood. That, that's probably a good thing. Uh, when it comes to, to blood tests. Um, uh, th let me uh, take in Gemma from Staffordshire. She is 03 on, give me a ring on 0344 499 1000. Gemma, uh, you're on with Joe. What would you like to say? Hi there. Um, right, so what I want to say is a few years ago I met somebody um, and we got on really well and we talked about politics a lot, but we never, she, she, she would never tell me who she voted for because her father, who was a lawyer, said you should never tell anybody who you vote for. So I thought about this, because all my life I've been telling everybody. Um, and I started doing that. Uh, it's quite useful this time, because I actually don't know. Who okay, I yeah, for. yeah. You can genuinely um, say you haven't made up your mind. Yeah. And then I have a lot of young friends um, who, when I tell them, I sort of play around and say, oh, I might vote Labour this year, or I might vote Green this year, or whatever. They say, oh, why would you vote for them? They're not going to win. And there's more than one, one of my friends who said that to me over the... They, 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 they don't want me to vote for this, this party because that party is not going to win. Now, that is the most basic way of looking at politics that's going on. And it's mm -hmm. rife. It's rife among the young community, the community of people who feel disenfranchised by the previous government and the current government. They don't want to be associated with a losing side. Now, that is so immature and so sad, right, that it makes me, it makes me upset. So I... So I do try now and sort of say, look, I hate this government. I think they're awful. It's not because they're conservative. It's because they're, they've been rubbish. They have not been good enough. And then we've got this loads of other parties who look and present themselves quite well, like reform, very well presented, Labour much better presented than previously. Um, Lib Dems, not sure, but probably nothing too bad about them that we've heard. But... It's, it, it seems to me that, that the people in power do not know what they're doing and it falls to the electorate to tell them what they want. And the electorate doesn't know either. And that's a very frightening and sad situation. And I just wonder whether polling, what's the point of it? And I'd like to ask that man... Joe, okay, is Joe, what is, the, what is the point of polling? Uh, well, it provides a feedback for the government uh, in a way that right. we hope is an accurate reflection of what the public think, uh, in a way that is only otherwise possible at general, uh, at general elections and by-elections. And the reason that's important is because if you don't have that, you have people who will come on to, uh, come on to shows like this and indeed uh, speak in newspapers and various other things saying this is what the public think and it just so happens that it it aligns precisely with my own personal views. Uh, and so we provide, or at least we try to provide, good polling will try to provide a neutral, representative view of what the British public thinks so that people can react to that. Now, it doesn't mean that they necessarily need to follow it, uh, but it means that they're aware of the consequences of, uh, of their actions. If they adopt a policy that is not popular, they should be aware that it is not popular. And, uh, and I think we provide a good service in that respect. Um, Leslie has been in touch and said, how can Labour be ahead? Uh, Stormer hasn't come forward with any policies. It's not a done deal for Labour. Do you think it's a done deal for Labour, Joe? I don't think anything can be guaranteed. If the last 10 years have taught us anything in British politics, it's that nothing is outside the realms of possibility. Labour still need to get 124 gains at the next election, mm. whenever that may be. By historical standards, that's enormous. It's only been achieved once in the British post-war period, and that was under Tony Blair in 1997. And so we would have to have a 1997-type performance just to get a majority of two. And uh, and so it's, it is a big challenge. Big task. Yeah. But, uh, but nonetheless, Labour are consistently doing very well. On the most recent polls, uh, Labour would expect a majority of 142 just based on, uh, on basic estimates around, uh, around swing. David is in Glasgow. He's given us a call, 0344 499 1000. David, what would you like to say? Peter, I hope you're well today. I'm very well. How are you? Good, good. Excellent. Yes, I mean, so we're sitting here again looking at this election next year. We've got Labour and Conservative, which I would say as a, as a voter is not really that appealing. OK? In yep. Scotland, we've got this third option of the SNP. And again, with all the difficulties they've had, that becomes less appealing. So 
the issue that I've got is we're now facing this election with really not much of a choice. And when does the time come till we can actually take other parties, smaller ones perhaps, and give them a, a good fighting chance of at least getting one or two MPs? Because if we go and vote for those parties this time around, the chances are they're just not going to get in. And, and we need to shake up politics in the UK. OK, so who do you think, who's your uh, vote going to go to, do you think, if you don't mind me asking? I, I, I struggle, Peter. I mean, I, 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 I would doubt I would ever vote for Conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to vote for Labour. I became disillusioned with Labour and I voted the SNP. Uh, the SNP are now struggling, so I'm kind of like thinking, well, where do I go as a voter now? I would love to go to a, another party mm -hmm. who's smaller and pro pro you know more progressive and probably going to be challenging the system a lot more, but Look at reform, for instance, in the last election, they got over a million votes and got no MPs. Yeah, well, indeed. Well, not, actually, let me hold that thought, David, because I want to ask um, Joe actually about Reform UK because there are a lot, I mean, they're doing really well in some polls, 11%, 12%, but in the last uh, council election, Reform UK only got uh, six extra councillors. So, um, and it looks as if the way, because of the, the spread of voting, although you can tell us you're the expert, it doesn't look as if reform will necessarily get any MPs even. I mean, how is that even possible with a with the first past the post system, of course, stops them, but 11 or 12 percent, there may, may be many people saying, well, is that a wasted vote if you vote for a Reform UK? Uh, well, it depends on what you want your vote to be. If you want it to make a difference in your constituency, it may indeed make uh, make a difference because it may uh, it may take votes away from the Conservatives, for instance, which could let uh, let Labour in, or indeed the opposite, depending on uh, depending on how you voted uh, voted last time. Uh, they're averaging around about eight or nine percent in our most recent polls. Are on uh, they're on nine percent, and so that's certainly an increase on where they uh, are and where they have been. It's worth pointing out the Greens have been doing uh, doing well as. Uh, as well. But when it comes to by-elections, for instance, reform consistently are around about, uh, around about 5%. And I think, I think the difficulty they have really breaking through will be partly, uh, and well, I say partly, and it's a big part, the electoral system, as you talk about. Yeah. They, they may well come uh, second or third in a lot of constituencies, but I think it's highly unlikely they will win any. Uh, but part of the problem is they don't really have a particularly well-established set of policies around particularly the economy, which, okay. as mentioned, is the most important uh, is the most important issue. In, in previous guises, whether it's the Brexit Party or UKIP, however you want to characterise it, the answer to so many questions was we'll leave the EU. Mm. Uh, and so how are you going to lower taxes? We'll leave the EU and that yeah, will be Well, that's a question for Starmer as well. We've got someone in touch about this saying if, he, if Starmer inflicts on the country a party that wants trans rights closer to the EU, foreign immigration, climate nonsense, that's something that someone's been in touch with. Terry in Birmingham also says why bother to vote when the civil servants and judiciary decide what happens? These all happen to be lefty woke liberals. Happy New Year says Terry in Birmingham. Well, happy New Year to you as well, Terry, and a happy very New Year to Joe Twyman as well, the co-founder of Delta Pool. So thank you to him as well. We're going to take more calls on Excel bullies uh, as well. There are loads of people just want to get in on this topic. It's a big debate today. The legislation changing from midnight. If you have an XL bully you've got to get it registered. That costs £92. And then from February, uh, basically a ban on XL bullies as well. It's a very, very big topic and we're going to talk about that uh, as well. And thank you to lots of people who have been in touch including Rick and Sutton Coolfield in Birmingham who says um, uh, Peter, this breed has been responsible for half, 12, of all dog attacks in the UK, uh, dog deaths in the UK in the past uh, three years. I'm not sure of the exact statistics on that. We've had different people saying different things. I'll check that during the break. How the dickens can these dog lovers bleed about the ban? Banning them will save countless lives. Um, uh, Ian says, I think the entire country is thinking, what's the point in voting? Because once elected, no party carries out the policies they were elected on. Brexit and immigration are too huge examples and uh, Frank on Twitter says I'm not sure there is such a thing as a responsible dog owner just degrees of irresponsibility uh, never come across as a dog owning neighbour that doesn't let their dog bark or leave its mess on the street if no one is around lots more uh, on this if you want to get your voice on the air 0344 499 1000 you can text me on 87 triple two with the word talk in your text and you can tweet me of course at talk tv or follow me at peter cardwell more on XL bullies next here on talk tv Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. 
criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing interviews. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. Well, thank you so much for all your calls, texts and tweets today. It is, of course, New Year's Eve. And uh, I just want to wish everybody a very happy New Year, uh, which I will do again tomorrow between 7 and 10. I am presenting the breakfast programme. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, I'm slightly struggling, but it's the tail end of this cold. Um, it was some sort of cold or flu or bug or something. I was off before Christmas and I just have a little bit of a cough. So apologies if that's annoying you. If you're wa watching or listening today, I can assure you it's annoying me too. And I have my little, um, <laughs> I have my little bottle of... Uh, cough syrup which I've been taking but actually um, Dr Renee earlier has uh, given me some extra th or suggestions anyway of something to take that's enough about my throat anyway th uh, not, and let's go to your throats and your calls and your voice boxes Ricky is in Kent who's given me a call on 0344 499 Sorry, 1000 your recording was a bit too long oh. to re-record press 1 to listen to your message again Press two. Oh, there we are. Well, we've given Ricky a call, um, and uh, apparently our recording was a bit too long. Uh, so there we are. Perhaps we can get another caller up uh, to talk about that. But um, it was nice talking to the O2 woman for a minute or two. I mean, she is she is a role to play in the national discourse as well. Um, but uh, we will get another caller up anyway to talk about uh, what is happening. Uh, with lots of people getting in touch as well about. Uh, about, oh goodness, this is a very long text actually about XL bullies. Uh, it's always the bad owners and backyard breeders, this person says, causing these issues, which now they've conveniently dumped or rehomed these dogs and moved on to another breed. This will not stop dog attacks in the UK since the Dangerous Dog Act was brought in in 1991. Uh, on the politics as well, a few people getting in touch, Barry says, Reform UK, is, his biggest obstacle is Richard Tice, its leader, according to Barry. He is no different from Starmer and Sunak. He lacks the common touch. Nigel Farage is a much better candidate for leader, says uh, Barry. Well, I think 
Um, first of all, I like Richard Tice. He's a former colleague here at Talk TV. Um, I don't know if he'd call me a friend, but we're certainly good colleagues, and I need to kind of declare that. But uh, certainly there are many people, including me, who I don't think Richard would be, be too upset about this, who uh, would be clear that Nigel Farage is a very charismatic person who connects with people in a way that very few politicians do. And uh, I think my personal view is that Nigel Farage will play a much, much bigger role in uh, Reform UK's uh, campaigning in 2024. I think that I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here was a, a huge thing for him, uh, went pretty well for him as well and I think that he'll be back. He is, I think, the, the president or the, the sort of honorary chairman, something like that, of uh, Reform UK and I can see him having a very, very big role because he is, he is one of the most instantly recognisable people in the country. Ricky and Kent is back. We've lost the O2 woman. Uh, Ricky, we got through to your answer phone but now we've got you, Ricky. So what are your thoughts on XL Billies? Thanks for your call and welcome to the programme. Hello. Um, yeah, it's my first time call. I've called LBC a few times but it's the first time I've called here. Well, you've um, come to the right place. Yes, definitely. We watch it all the time. Um, we've got a pet shop in Lewisham, um, and it's um, got lots of XL Bully owners. Um, I've got my own dog food that I made myself, and I have an XL Bully on the front, which is a friend of mine's dog. Okay, um, it's, on, it's on the pet food? It's actually on the front of yeah. our pet food, our okay. own design with his XL on it. Um, we've got hundreds of people with XLs, and 99% of them are lovely. Okay. Really lovely dogs. Really, really nice. Come in the shop, we give them treats. They're brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. When they say um, these are taxed by XLs, I can honestly say I've looked at the videos. Most of them are not an XL. A load of people think they've got an XL, and you look at it, they come in and go, oh, I've got an XL. I, go, I look at it, I don't say, mm, that isn't. I just go, oh, it's lovely, yeah, yeah. yeah. But most of them, like that one that chased that kid, is about half the size of an XL bully. It will more likely be a massive cross something or something like that. But they haven't. In America, they have a big problem with, obviously, big dogs. They have a problem with guns, and we haven't got here. But they're not going around killing people, buying people. I've been bit so many times by little dogs when I'm putting a muzzle on them or a harness or a collar. I've never been bit by one day. I've never even had but, one day. But if color. you were, and I hope you never are, Ricky, oh, but if you were, that, that, it yeah, it would be a very, very different thing, wouldn't it? And a lot of, of people course. do have real concerns. I'm sure you're right. You know, you know, you know animals back to front. You've got your pet shop. Um, I know you're a dog owner yourself. You know dogs far better than I do. But there is this fear factor. There are people who will welcome this legislation because they're walking down the street. They see an aggressive looking dog, not necessarily an XL bully, but uh, an aggressive looking dog. And they are scared by that. And there are some people who have those dogs because it does make other people scared. Definitely. Oh, some, but they're the people you target and you take the dogs off. Mm -hmm. The government are giving £200 to give your dog in and a vet, which I think they've got a duty of care. I'd love to do a GoFundMe page or something like that and take it to court. I don't think it's just because the government come out with something. As we know, the High Court can overrule it. Now, for you to put a healthy dog down, give someone 200 quid, I think it's against the law. You can't just put a healthy... If it's vicious, biting people... Dog, but, I, but that I, is the change shepherd. in the law that's, that's coming in from February, uh, Ricky. That's what's, that's what's going to happen. I know, but it's, it's just because the government have said this is a thing, it doesn't make it that the High Court... Look at Rwanda. It doesn't make it the High Court are going to back it, but you need everyone to get do, together. Do you think, do you think there'll be a lot of people who will, who will take this all the way, who will take this to I high... I would high. love to. I've got to be honest, I've got a court case coming with someone who owes me a lot of money on property. Otherwise, I'd be taking it on myself. Yeah. And we've got yeah. it. I can honestly say it's took seven years mm -hmm. to get it. Mm -hmm. So the court system is obviously having problems. But this is quite an important one. The government of obviously put their thing on it to, right, we, we're going to get something through. Mm. They can't get the Rwanda thing through, oh, we get the... But why bullies? Anyone with a dangerous dog, if the police got up to him and he starts biting her, and they hasn't got a muzzle, mm -hmm. they give him a warning. If it's ever uh, again, it, the dog gets taken away. Yeah. But not just every XL bully. How can you say... Every, and when you put a muzzle on a dog, if I go up to a dog, I know muzzle, and I can understand, but most people see a muzzle on a dog and they go, oh, my God. That dog's vicious. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, definitely yeah. going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the dogs will get more vicious because if every time you meet someone new, I've tied your hands up and someone comes up to you, you're going to be like, oh, oh, you can't protect yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and little dogs off the lead, fine, go up to a big dog, 
they bite the big dog, the big dog bites back, they are big damage, obviously. Mm. I've, got, I've got a German Shepherd, a Labrador. My, my German Shepherd was a top police dog. He is a, his dad, he is as soft as him, because I didn't want him vicious. And we've just got a, sh- a Shiba Inu, I can't even believe say it. My boy got it for my missus for Christmas. That dog has got more go than my other two. Right, I can okay. honestly say that. They're all, they're, all, they're all different. They all have different personalities and they all have uh, a different way of, of, of doing things. Ricky, thanks for your call. It's Ricky in Kent. Uh, Mal is in Peterborough. It's giving me a call on 0344-499-1000. Mal, you're very welcome to the programme. What would you like to say? Good afternoon. And I may just say a very happy New Year to all your staff and yourself. For and to you as well. Tomorrow. Thank you. It's about the dogs, obviously. Now, we all know that when you ban something, it then becomes a prize. Like we banned pit bulls. I had my bull mastiff DNA, and she's got 25% pit bull in her, which I thought was a banned breed. So all that's going to happen is you're going to get people owning a bull, a, a, one of these bully dogs. Yeah, Axel Billy. It's, it's yeah. a status. It's a. It's a. It is a status symbol. The same as people still own pit bulls. You cannot clamp down on it. You, so you, 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 you think this this legislation, these these bans and so on, aren't actually going to help at all? No, not at all. The okay. same as they've not worked with the pit bulls because my dog doesn't look like a pit bull, absolutely nothing, and I only know she's got pit bull in her because mm-hmm. I did her DNA. Okay, so okay. If, if my baby, I mean, she's only a couple of years old, mm-hmm. has got pit bull in her, how has a banned breed got in a dog? And the XL bullies, you're going to see lads walking around the states with XL bullies. As they do, and they'll say, that's not an XL bully, that's a, an American bulldog. Yeah, and you yeah, can't yeah. tell the difference. Yeah. Well, that, that is that is a big question in terms of how that is actually going to be established. Um, Karen's been in touch on text to say, I know people with bullies, not one of them is vicious, but not one of them has recall. So they were going to go for somebody. I will. It will carry on regardless. Um, uh, on Richard Tice, John in Wallington has been in touch. He sent me a text to say, Richard Tice should not be underestimated. He has a steely determination to see Reform UK's policies through, says John in Wallington. Thank you to that, John. I know you text us from time to time and a very happy new year to you as well. Um, I want to talk to John in Surrey about XL Billy Dogs as well. He's given me a call on 0344 499 1000. John, uh, happy new year. You're on the air. What would you like to say? Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, um, I'm Peter. Um, I'm, um, I've been a dog owner for many, many, many years now. Look, I mean, I'm nearly 80 years I'm over 80 years old now. Okay, okay. And um, I'm, I'm, to be frank with you, to be frank with you, I, I am involved, or I have been involved in the gun dog world. Now, to be frank with you, we have always bred. Um, we, we've always been selective about the breeding of these dogs. Like, now, if I'm being frank with you, I would like to raise the point like, that if you wanted a vicious type of dog like you would breed with that in mind. Okay. So I feel, okay. I, so I, feel I feel in my opinion, in my opinion though, don't persecute people who, who own the dogs, the people who really should be um, brought into line like are the people who are breeding this type of animal. Okay. Okay. John, yeah. thanks for your perspective. I appreciate that. Grant is in Dorset. Uh, Grant, thanks for your call. What would you like to say? Hi. Uh, Peter, just want to wish everybody a happy new year. Um, my you. bit of a weird, weird story. I've worked in the electronic security industry for 27 years, so that means getting burglar alarms, CCTV, and all the rest of it. Um, in that 27 years, I've been bitten by 14 dogs. Wow. Okay. One of them was my own fault because I stood on it. Right. So I can't really that. The other 13 have all been little dogs. Uh-huh. Every single one. And I've worked with police dogs, personal protection dogs, um, rescue dogs, vish, inverted commas, vicious dogs, mm-hmm. and I've never, honest to God, had a problem. Okay. But, but you also accept, Grant, I'm really sorry to hear you, I've been bitten by 14 dogs. I've never been bitten by a dog. I never want to be bitten by a dog. But, but they're all small dogs who, I mean, in your experience, obviously it's only one person's experience, but you do have a lot of experience of dogs. And, and do you think these XL Billy dogs are being unfairly marginalised? But, I mean, some of the facts are there, Grant, in terms of these deaths that have occurred. Oh, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not trying to... Because there's been to be two sides. You either hate them or you love them. But you're somewhere in the middle. Yes, because I've... 
I've I've seen what big dogs can do when they're badly trained. I've actually helped friends train their dogs from being vicious, and they've all been little dogs. Yes. But the big... I, I, I can't... It's just the owners, and I think a lot of the problems we're getting is in the inner city centres where you've got a lot of drugs, a lot of people with those type dogs, and they should just be taken away from that type owner. Mm. And... and moved away because so so maybe see, so, uh, some people have been saying grant it is owners rather than necessarily the dogs themselves but it is a very different thing to be nipped by a chihuahua or to be bitten and possibly worse by an xl bully or or similarly l large and strong dog um i've got scars all over me from the dog bites goodness me and they have been little dogs so um the smallest was a dachshund that took a chunk out the back of my shin um, and all the rest of it. And it's always been little dogs. I've actually mm. worked with apparently vicious dogs, not known, played with them, and they said, my God, what are you doing? And I said, I was just playing with the dog. Oh, that's never happened before. Wow, okay. I don't know. Yeah. But the thing is, I, uh, it's bad owners. Mm. No dog, I don't care how, how vicious the dog is, you get a proper person who can look after it, you can train it out of it. Okay, it, it, okay. It, it, it's, it's how the dog is treated. Yeah. Grant, that's a fascinating perspective because you really have thought about it um, in, in lots of different ways. So thank you for that. That's Grant in Dorset. Anne in Kent says, Peter, we need the courts to give far more severe sentences to owners of badly behaved dogs. The owners of dogs that severely attack or kill a person should be prosecuted and must always go to prison. Those owners whose dogs kill should be charged with murder. Jill says the do law regarding XL bullies has been made for political reasons alone. It sounds like they are taking decisive action, but it's all just for show. Like everything else politicians do, it's for their own ends, not the good of the public. Uh, Stephen Nottinghamshire has a quick true story. He says, while at work with a colleague, we knocked on a customer's door and a session came out and bit my colleague on the leg. The owner's response was, he's never done that before. So there we are, says Steve in Nottinghamshire. Uh, Joe in Bournemouth wants to get in on this. Uh, Joe, you're very welcome to uh, the show. What would you like to say? Good afternoon. Now. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'd like to say in regards to the bully breed and basically any dog that is big enough that the owner can't control it when it's out of control because the problem comes you see we i used to have a Staffordshire bull terrier we used to have a, a set of dogs and we would have dangerous dogs brought in to be um, rehabilitated okay and the problem comes if the owner can't control it if it does get out of control mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you can't control one of these xl bullies when it's out of control it's yeah. impossible They're and they are they are so incredibly strong bad. as well aren't they yeah, they, they, we bumped into one the other day, and he was like a little lion. He was huge. And I just knew that he might be perfect 99% of the time, mm. but you never know. And this is the problem but, we but, have. But a lot of people say that with a lot of dogs, and we've just, we've just spoken to someone who's been bitten by 14 different dogs uh, and has the scars to prove it. So that's my exact point. I said any dog yeah. that is big enough to be out of control and yeah. can't be controlled by the owner. Because the problem is, you're right, you get lots of little little dogs that are nippy little dogs the worst they're going to do is put a little pinprick in you and give you a bite mark mm. unfortunately once you step past Staffordshire Bull Terriers you start going up when you get a vicious one if you've got an owner I've had a Staffordshire Bull Terrier a very aggressive one attack I was able to control it and deal with it but I think bigger than that I would probably struggle Okay. And, and, and this is the problem is you can't control a dog like that so a muzzle is a great idea and I think unfortunately we as humans like to breed these dogs, you know, we breed bad, bad health dogs, we breed all sorts of dogs, and, and we don't need to. We don't need to. We could, we could ban the breed, mm. any bully that's around now, put some regulation in place, and just start stepping down to smaller dogs so yeah. we don't have to have these problems. Okay, Joe, really good points. They're a really interesting perspective as well. Leslie has been in touch to say the difference in dog bites in a small dog bite, a dog, small dog bite would not be life threatening, whereas a bully dog could and has killed. That's exactly the point I made, Leslie. It's a good one. Charlotte is in Stansted. Uh, do you have an XL bully, Charlotte? Is that correct? Uh, yes, I do. Yes. Okay, so tell well, us your XL perspective on all of this. Type. She's, Sorry, a, she's, a, she's a type. Okay. So, um, basically it's any bull breed over 19 
inches. Yes, so yes. So, so what, really do you, what do you think about all of this? Well, I'm, I'm a responsible owner. I don't have my dog as a status. Uh, I'm 50 years old. I work for the government. I have a good job. I've been to university. Um, uh, you know, I don't live... Well, we're, you know, the status dog and how everybody perceives us to be. You're, 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 you don't own a dog to intimidate people, uh, Charlotte. You've, no. you, you've, you've chosen to own it and you're an intelligent, reasonable person uh, who, who's made a, made a reasonable decision to do so. Yeah, and we got we we so we got uh, my dog Greeny. We took her to every training session mm -hmm. we possibly could. She's socialised. We go to big dog play once a week, which we've done for three years. We'll never be able to do that again. Um, she has a made amazing recall. She's a good girl. She's a, you know, and and the other thing everybody's saying, you know, oh, they're massive. They're seventy kilos. She's not. Mm. She's thirty so kilos. How do you so feel about all of this? You've done basically all the right things. You've done everything the laws required you to do. I'm sure you've paid your ninety-two pounds to get your dog registered in advance of tonight's uh, midnight deadline and so on, I Charlotte. Haven't. You haven't. No. Oh, and are you going no. to? Absolutely, but I'm waiting until kind of the judicial review. Ah, and, okay, and, interesting. And also, but you'll be in the breach it, of the law tomorrow, Charlotte. You're not worried about that. No, so you have to do. So we have everything. We have the insurance. She's mm. already been neutered. Yeah, she's chipped. We have it all. She's been out today. She's been on a muzzle. She's mm. been on her lead. So we're being interesting. totally responsible. But you're but, waiting for the judicial review. You're waiting to see what happens. Yeah, I mean that will be before the end of January. So, okay, yeah. and, and a lot and a lot of people have waited simply because if we'd registered her, say five weeks ago, she would have had to have been on a lead and a muzzle five weeks ago. Right. So, okay. okay. This is why a lot of people are just kind of waiting. Yeah. And another thing is the government saying there's you know maybe ten thousand XL bully types. Mm. I think everybody is in for a massive shock. There's going to be over 100,000 XL bully types. Well, and we, we will dogs, see them. Well, all dogs are getting pulled in. You've got people yeah. who are, have got a staff across Labrador and they're, people are just desperate. They don't know well, what we, to do. We, we the will government see, yeah, we'll, left it up to us. Charlotte, we'll see what happens. It's going to be really, really interesting. Thanks for your call. Anna and sorry says, I'm sorry, but the idea that it's the owner, not the dog, is ridiculous. It's the XL that kills me, not the owner. You have no right to take that risk with my life, says Anna. Um, I have been bitten 15 times as one person over 10 years by vicious dogs. Please, please don't forget how many children, adults, all innocent people have died. Uh, yes, they have died. The XL bully dogs are so strong, very, very strong, that the owner could never, ever control them when the dog kicks off. Simple as that. And the government keeps on saying we learn from things. Let's not go down the route of learning for more people will die. Lots and lots to chew over in all of that. Lots of people wanting to get in. And I hope I've given uh, the whole sides of the debate, the midnight deadline, of course, to register your bully. Dog will be there. We're going to talk about this in the breakfast show tomorrow between 7 and 10 as well. Uh, we're going to leave this now, but as I say, I'm going to return to it. On The Breakfast Show, I'm on between 7 and 10 tomorrow. Next, we're going to talk about the sad death of John Pilger, the campaigning journalist. Stay with us for that. We're here! Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to use the XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book.
Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are Absolutely. you prepared to call is Hamas to a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Thank you so much for your company today. Um, Nick James and Melton Mowbray has been in touch. He says, Peter, I enjoy your programme and value your opinions as a serious political commentator. Thank you very much indeed. And as such, I'm amazed that with all the issues this country faces, you've chosen to dedicate virtually a whole programme to XL Bullies, an issue that I suggest the majority of the country cares, not a jot. Well, Nick, lots of people do care. It's, uh, there's a big news hook tonight, tonight at this midnight deadline, to have XL Bullies who are uh, to be registered. And in a month's time, there's going to be an effective ban. This is something a lot of people want to talk about. We've had a lot of people who have been ringing in, texting in, tweeting to the programme, and really, uh, my programmes are what people want to talk about. Yeah, I'd, I'd happily talk about politics for three hours every Saturday and Sunday, but that's just a bit of the shows, and really what we want to do with all the shows we do is have a bit of light and shade, a bit of variety, I suppose. And of course, yeah, we talked a lot about XL Bullies, uh, and I make no apology for that, but um, James, uh, and sorry, Nick, I should say, Nick James, we will absolutely be talking a lot more about politics in 2024. Believe me, you will be possibly sick of it uh, by the time, because uh, three quarters of the democratic world is going to be voting, including this country. It's going to be absolutely fascinating. So plenty of politics to come. Don't worry. One final call on Excel Billy's John in Hampshire. Uh, John, you're very welcome. What would you like to say? Um, hello, yes. Um, I'm from Hampshire. I'm John. Um, I'm just a bit concerned about the vulnerable people um, walking around doing shopping in the towns and doing their everyday thing about seeing these stray dogs running wild on the streets with no owners. Um, and also, it's very alarming when they've got a health condition um, to feel they, they can't walk a street safe and a dog attacks them on the high street. This is a real street. worry for a lot of people. A lot of people are very, very afraid of these dogs, even if they are. Now they're going to be muzzled, I suppose. Would that, would that make you less worried about them? Um, I think, well, it would be very worrying and very alarming for a lot of people with health conditions, and I think they should bring out a law and they should have a licence on these dogs running the streets. Um, if they ain't got an owner, I think they ought to be kept away and put in an RSPCA or anywhere locked up, really, because they're very dangerous to the public. Well, there are people who try to actually uh, rescue them and, and adopt them and try to train them and so on. I mean, there are some dogs that are friendly and reasonable and some dogs that aren't. Well, yes, but um, and also there's other conditions. There's people who haven't got no homes at all. They go on the streets, beg on the streets, and in every town and every city with their dogs on a loose lead, not on a lead or collar or anything. And, of course, that dog goes to that person when they're passing, when they're shopping on a high street. And okay. I think it's very bad. It's not very good at all. OK, well, John, thank you for your opinion. Really appreciate that. That was John in Hampshire there. Uh, lots and lots of opinions on this 
particular issue. And we are going to continue the discussion tomorrow. Apologies to, to uh, that uh, texter earlier on who wasn't too happy about it. But uh, it is a big, big issue. And of course, the ban will be, or the uh, registration idea will be in uh, place tomorrow. Um, so uh, we will see what happens there. Uh, we've seen as well a bit of breaking news in the last little while that John Pilger, who is a, uh, was a very campaigning journalist, big critic of American foreign policy and British foreign policy as well, he has died at the age of 84. Many people will remember him, will have read his work or seen him on the television. He might not be someone you necessarily agree with, but he was definitely someone who believed in what he did and worked incredibly hard and had an incredible voice as well. Um, he, has, he died yesterday. He was an Australian journalist, writer, scholar and documentary maker. He based been based here in the UK as Australian, but he'd be based in the UK since 1962. He'd also been a visiting professor at Cornell University as well. A uh, big critic, as I say, of American, Australian, British foreign policy. He considered it to be driven by an imperialist agenda, colonial agenda as well. And he'd also criticise Australia's treatment, uh, not just as foreign policy, but also its treatment of its indigenous population as well. So um, we had hoped to talk to someone to, uh, about John Pilger. We may still do that by the end of the programme, um, but uh, I, th I think we, 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 uh, we will certainly talk about John Pilger if you want to talk about him tomorrow on my programme as well. I'll be here between 7 and 10 tomorrow morning uh, on breakfast. I'll also be here tomorrow on Tuesday, oh, sorry, tomorrow between 7 and 10, I should say, and on Tuesday between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. as well. Uh, so um, more on John Pilger tomorrow because he was a very, very interesting uh, person who uh, contributed a lot to what we talked about in this country and uh, our views or, or perhaps our, our uh, another side of our view, certainly the debate on foreign policy. So we'll, t we'll talk about him tomorrow. But actually, um, one person has texted me, Gemma has texted me, to say, I saw you turn me down, Peter. I just want to say Happy New Year to my favourite political media mind on all fronts. And I thought, Gemma, actually, let's get her back on the air. Uh, Gemma, I'm sorry for turning you down. And uh, we can turn you back up again. And uh, Gemma from Staffordshire is back on the air. Hello. Happy New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve to you. What are you doing tonight, Gemma? Uh, having a nice meal with friends. At home. Great stuff. Well, thank you for your very kind sentiments. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, and uh, thank you for being thank a loyal talk, viewer and listener. Yeah, Talk TV have helped me this year so much. I've been watching from a laptop. I've had no carpet. I had a flood. And I really don't know what I would have done without your, you guys. So well, happy New Year. That's very kind, Gemma. Very happy New Year to you as well. I really appreciate your uh, your call and your thoughts on that. That's Gemma who, um, I, I we had to move on quickly. I turned her down, but she had her say again. And one person who always has her say is, of course, the marvellous Petri Hoskin. Hello there. What's coming up in your programme between one and four? Hello. A uh, fantastic calls you've had on the XL. Yeah, the fascinating, XL isn't it? Yeah, it's a big, it's a big deal. Um, so for, for us, we're going to be looking at, because um, you know I'm, big on geopolitics yes, I love, of course yeah. I love the geopolitics and it's it's so fascinating how it all ties in with us so we're going to be looking at Ukraine and and Russia and really what is next because if we start withdrawing money from Ukraine and already the Americans have only just signed off some the last tranche of money mm -hmm. uh, in Europe the Hungary have said no more money so what happens you know we can't just abandon them can we well it wouldn't be the first time in the West that we've abandoned and a country so we'll be having a look at that AI uh, and all the fakery that's around it's fascinating isn't it uh, really and and also Kim Jong-un because he's prepping for war in fact he's just yes. instructed yesterday um, for more nuclear weapons to be made mm -hmm. uh, 